close the doors of your mind from all carnal will, all carnal thought, all emotions, all desires, all fears, all laziness, all doubt, all deception, all demonic thought, all the, all the words and the seeds of Satan all and Satan that one has heard throughout the week. Knowing all the seeds and the things that he sows in the mind, only there to draw one away from one Amuna and one Allahim, Yahuwah Allahim who sits in the highest Shamaim with his Ben Yahushua and above the Shabai Shamaims, above the seven Shamaims, above the Rakia, above the firmament, above the cosmos, who sits above the surface of the earth and the center of the earth, the one who raises and closes the gates of Sheol, the one who gives life and takes away, the one who re re rescues people from, from the actual gates of Sheol and brings them to the paradise. Yahuwah and his Ben Yahushua, the one who gives life and understanding, our mother and our father in the higher Shamaim. Tonight, we thank you, Hua, for another Yun. We thank you, Hua, for another life, a day for giving us life and understanding within ourselves that we may longer walk in the imagination of our own will and our own thoughts and our own mind, that we may love him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and being, and that we may lift up our hands to him and be saved near him and not far away. For the name of you, is a strong tower, the righteous, the Sadiq, running to him and we are safe. So today we acknowledge the one, this Shabbat, we acknowledge the one who sits in the highest Shemaim, who made all of the Nahar and the, and the Har of the earth, the rivers, the mountains, the hills, and the streams that serve him. All who gives us rain, Geshem, and Shaleg, and snow in the time appointed in the seasons, according to a 364 day cycle, according to the seven celestial chariots, according to the four corners of this earth. Yahuwah Alahim, who gives his son, Yahusha, to die for our lives and to give us life within and to give us understanding and consciousness within as our shepherd, the one who is the good shepherd, Yahuwah Alahim. So this yum, as palm trees, we bend and we don't break in the middle of the storm. Right, so this is Odi E Shaloma, Odi E Shaloma, Odi E 34, 1 through 6. There is no hard way where there is a simple heart, no barrier for upright thoughts. So when we look at that simple heart, we talk, we're, we're, you look at your mind and your thoughts, you look at the simplicity of Yahushua Mashiach, and no barrier of upright thoughts. When you have upright thoughts, these are all things that allow you to have a perfect offering. Or you say, Tamim offering, something that is a standard for all. It says, verse 2 says, no whirlwind in the depth of enlightened thought. When you look at an enlightened thought, you look at your inner man, you look at your enlightenment that happens when you first come into the world. Right, wherever you were born or being born again, that enlightened thought took you over and then you took on a different type of nature when you were immersed. If all the immersed into Yahushua have put him on and went into the, I say, the water and allowed one to take on a different nature and thought. Verse 3, where one is surrounded entirely by pleasing country, there is nothing divided to him. So you look at pleasing country, you look at the countryside, the hillside, the Selah. As we spoke about before, we look at Kua herself, that reed, right? You look at it, say, lie. It has hillsides, it has trees, it has animals, it has, it has all types of fruits and vegetables and herbs and all things on the hillside, they say, lie. When it's pleasing country, there's nothing divided in you. There's nothing divided in your thoughts or your mind. There's no divisions in you. Like, there's nothing divided. It's all a cod. Verse 4 says, the likeness of that which is below is that which is above. So when we look at things below, right, it's the same thing. As above, so below. Right, you got cuckoo beam and stars in the highest Shamaim, you got stars on the earth. You got things that are aligned with the planets in the Shamaim, and you got them on earth. Right, just like you have to be aligned with Yahuwah in the highest Shamaim with his being at the right hand, you got to be aligned with him. As above, so below. And these things are created, whether it's the groves, the monoliths, and the things that people worship today, or whether it's the actual stars themselves and human beings that people worship today. But yet, Yahuwah Elohim, who sits in the, in the Hala Shamaim, is the only person one should bow a knee to, right? But it says right here, for, not, for everything is from above, and from below there is nothing, right? So you look at everything that comes from above, just like a waterfall that falls, just like rain and snow, it waters the earth. But it is considered to be by those in whom there is no understanding, right? When, they, when you don't have no bina, kumbha da'at and understanding within your hukma, in your, in your inner man, 
then you think that everything below made everything above. Dual natures, right? Verse 6 says, Khan has been revealed for your salvation. Believe and live and be saved. So, like I say, Amon, Kai, and he say, Yasha, you be saved. You be saved, right? So this is Ayub, Job 12, 7 through 12. Job, Ayub, Ayub 7 through 12. But ask the beast of the behemoth, and they will teach you. So you look at all the behemoth. What is the cattle, the ox? What is the elephant? What is it, the elephant or the, the way, uh, the elephant? Uh, giraffes, lions, right? These are all, or you look at oxes, or you look at cows. He said, ask the behemoth and they will teach you. And the birds of the shaman, and they will tell you, right? Because they get fed every day. The green grass, the grass come up, the green, he said, the green herbs and all the things they're supposed to eat come up every day. The squirrels, they're having a ball. Every single other animal, the groundhog, they ain't gotta, they ain't gotta go to the grocery store. It's right outside. All you gotta do is search for it. He provides it for it. He says, and they will tell you. He said, they gonna tell you. Or the bushes of the earth, and they will teach you. And the fishes of the sea will declare to you. All the look at all the trees and the eights. They gonna declare to you. They declare all seasons, right? When they eat, when you see the, the trees start to bud, you know that you know that. He said, when this when the fig tree starts to bud, you know that summer is near. Or he say, Keats. it's near. He said, they'll teach you. And the fish of the sea will declare it to you. They declare it to you while they're going in a circle in the whirlwind. They be moving in a circle, just like the cattle, the behemoth, the lambs, the goats, right? And the mountain goats and all the other mountain sheep. Yeah, they be moving in a circle. He said, they will declare to you, who among these does not know that the hand of Yahuwah has done this? Right? You look at everything that happens to you on a daily basis. Look at everything that goes on in your life, whether you're rich or poor, bond or free, whether you're free or you're not, whether you're in prison, all the things that you do, guess what? Yahuwah done it. Why did he do that? Either for something you've done wrong in your life or something you get ready to do in your life and he's trying to prevent you and stop you from doing it. So he's like, oh, so you telling me he took everything I had just to stop me from doing something in my life? Yep. You telling me he put me in prison to punish me for what I did in my life? Yep. And he has other beings to do it. He done it. Right, so if you got boils in your arms and your legs, and you scraping with a scraper, and you scraping it off, just understand you did something. <laughs> or he's testing you to stop you from being in a timeline so you can meet somebody else. Then you gotta recover. Because everything has a purpose, nothing just happens. Right, nothing just happens. Or you meet somebody, nothing just happens. Some people just think it, it just happens. No, nah, it ain't happening. Something just, no, nothing just happened. Everything's for a reason. It says, verse 10 says, in his hand is life of everything. Every living thing and the breath of all mankind, this the neshama, just like everything we read here is from the beginning. The behemoth, he say the, the bushes of the sea, the bushes, they, that's the trees, the birds, and the shamayim, the bee, all this from the beginning. The breath, the neshama, the ruach that he breathed in the, into Adam. All this is from the beginning. Nothing in here came from out of nowhere. This all came from the beginning. Barashi, chapter one. If people actually read it, I think people run away from that chapter. I think I think everybody on earth is ready. I think he put it there for you know put the put everything you need to know right there in the first chapter and see if mankind will ever read it. I think you think about that. I bet you everybody on this earth has at least read Genesis chapter one through verse twenty-eight. At least once in their life. It says verse eleven says, Does not the ear test the words? As the palate tastes the food, does not the ear taste the word, test the word as the palate tastes the food? So your ear has a tongue. Your ear has a tasting mechanism, just like right now, I'm speaking. Amar, utterance, I'm giving you utterance. All the words in my mouth are righteous, there's nothing twisted or crooked in them. Right, if, I, if I'm purposely trying to twist something, then that means I'm a deceiver. I'm not trying to deceive nobody. Verse 12 says, Wisdom is with the age, and understanding with length of day. So chokmah is with age men, and understanding with length of day. So if Adam lived 930 years, Nuak lived 960 years, they had a lot of wisdom, wouldn't you think? You would think that. If Seth, Sheth lived over 100 years, you would think that they have a lot of wisdom. Yahushua was here before Abraham was, before Adam was. I'm sure he... 
And then people be like, I'm more wiser than Yahushua Mashiach. I can, I, can, I can tell him what to do. Absolutely not. It says, wisdom with the age and understanding with them through days, right? Right, that word for it says, does not the ear, that word for ear is ozen, ozen, or azan, ozan, azan. Right, if you take out that vowel, they got ozen, but azan, right? And it says what? It's ear, it's a part of the body. Right, so you look at, look at a part of the body, look at your ear, you got two of them. Amazingly, you got two ears. Right, you got a left ear, you got a right ear. A left, a left ear, as we spoke about before, is like when a Malachi speaks to you. A right ear is when Yahuwah speaks. Right? He said, what ear are you listening with? But it said right here, it says the ear, an organ for hearing. It means also to inform you. Right? It's, it says advertise. Right? You see all these advertisements on television? And they always have a music. They have a sound. They have a vibration. And guess what they do? This car. This car allows you to smooth it, ride just like the waves on a surfboard. Right? They always have words with it to what? Where they put a music, a song, or a rap song, or say your, your favorite song or a popular song, or an old song from the 80s if they're targeting your, your actual age bracket. It's an advertisement. It's an audience. That's what you're using it. You're using the ear to taste what you're going to hear. Because whatever you eat, you're going to do. Whatever you eat, you're going to buy. Whatever you eat with your ear, you're going to actually perform. Right? So you look at Azen, because we talk about the Alephus, when you look at the numerical values, Aleph is one. Zen is seven. And the noon is 50. Which equals to 58. Which equals to 13. Does not the ear taste the word? Does not the ear taste the word as the palate taste the food? So what are you tasting? It's equals to 13. Because we know what equals to four. We, we know about four corners. We know about the four transition time. It's not the ear taste the word as the palate taste the food for a 364 day cycle. The ear, you say so you're going to need your ear for the whole year. Oh, that rhymes. You're going to need your ear for the whole year. Right? You're going to need it. You're going to need it, right? Just, does not the ear test? That word for test is bakan. It examines. He's examining. You know how you talk about examine yourself to see where you're in the moon? The ear is examining. It says try. It says prove. Remember it talks about prove what is perfect, the perfect will of you who it is? It says test the ruach. Didn't it say that? Test the spirit. How are you going to test it? By what you hear? To see if it's of Yahuwah or not. You got to hear it. There's no point. You know, this is the one thing that people don't do. Investigate. People don't investigate it. They be like, yeah, I'm just going to listen. I said, investigate. You may find something that the other person didn't see. You may see something the other person didn't know. But it says right here to examine, right? You examine yourselves, examine the, the bar. It says prove. It says the, the heart, because your ear, your ear is testing it. He said your ozen, your ozan is testing it, and then you gotta prove and you gotta try it. He said I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna eat that. That's that's herbs, because the people don't like vegetables. They don't like herbs. They don't like fruits. You know what they want? They want some meat. They want a meat cleaver with a, with a, with a, with a, with a Jack in the Box burger. That's what they want. They want a, they want a, a KFC, a clone chicken. No, they want they want a Zaxby's number six. Right? They'll eat that quick. But when you start putting herbs in their face, they're gonna throw it up. Right? Just like you eat herbs for the first time and you eat all that food for the, your whole life, you got them parasites in your body, them, them parasites are gonna make you throw that food up. They don't want no they don't want no herbs. They don't want that. They want they wanna they wanna they wanna they want a steak dinner from Morton's. <laughs> That's what they want. Right, no knock on the chains, but at the same time, that's what people do to make money, right? But it says what? Examine, tempt, try, right? It says what? That's what he's gonna do. He's gonna taste the word. So if it's if it's herbs, if it's bitter herbs, if it's something that is not good, it's gonna turn away. Just like you normally eat natural food, you're gonna spit it out. You're not gonna want it. it says, that's how the ear tests the words. That word for words is 
it tests the mila. It's going to test the ozin, it's going to become the utterance. It's going to test what's being said. The discourse, the speaking, the utterance, the speech, the byword. It's going to test it. The discourse, that's the explanation. It's going to, it's going to test the actual curriculum. Azan Bakan Mila, right? It says, don't it taste the like don't it taste the words as the palate? Guess what that word for palate is? Cake. They'll give you cake in the world. And people will eat that whole cake. It was an ice cream cake, a nice lemon cream cake, a vegan cake. They'll eat that or a sweet potato pie. Vegan edition. Right? They'll eat that. But it says, does not the ear test the word as the palate tastes the food? So the, the very palate, the, the, the very food, just like you, your tongue and your thing taste the food, you eating the same thing. It says the gums, the mouth. Just like the mouth tastes the food. Just like the gums. Just like you have that taste taste buds, it's tasting this thing. It's, it does, and it goes to the roof of your mouth. It says milk's in your mouth, not in your hand, right? Milk's in your mouth, not in your hand. The ear will milk, it says milk in your mouth, not in your hand, right? If it's some chocolate, People eat it real fast, right? That word for her, it says, does not, it says, does not the ear taste the word as the, as the palate taste? They say the palate taste, it means what? That means ta'am. The palate taste the food, right? Guess what it is? It's going to taste it. It's saying, I say, oh, taste and see that your who is good, ta'am. It says, does not the ear taste the word? Like the palate tastes the food, it's going to perceive it. It's going to perceive the food. It's going to sense the food. It's going to eat the food. It should. The ear is supposed to eat it. But if it's not good food, right, I'm not, I say, I'm not, he said, we're not dealing out things that are going to taste really that great unless it's some fruit. Most of everything, everything that's said is going to be something that, you know, it's herbs. It's, it's only there to purge your body. That's what herbs are for. Dandelion root. Right? Elderberry. Right? All these are a part of what? Purging the body. Garlic. Horseradish root. It's all there to purge the body. Purge the body from, from things, honey. Right? These are all things, you can't eat too much of it. It's all things to get things out of your body so you can be a healthy human being. Right? It says, does it not the ear taste the word as a plate taste the food? Palate taste the food? That word for food is a call. It's going to taste the food just like some food, just like you get from the stove. You know, they put cereal in here. I don't know why they put that in here. You know, good and well, nobody will eat no cereal when bare sheep were written. But they got, they got cereal in here. But at the same time, as the palate tastes the food, it says meat, meal, food supply. Just like you eat your food, you got your whole food supply. You got some lentils, you got some black beans, how you say blackberries, blueberries, right? Mangoes, right? Plantains, right? All these are a part of what? People's food. Some people eat meat, right? They love parasites, right? Because that's what they are, right? Anytime you do anything opposite of what Yahuwah said in the beginning, you get the, you get the, you get the other part of it. He said, you get the punishment of it. He said, short in life. Not long life, you get short in life, right? Because it ain't purging nobody. No, no meat that you eat out here is going to purge your body from anything. It must be real demonic. Right? Just like the person who ate the, what did he eat from China? He ate dog and he had to eat what to get the dog out of his body? Well, he had to eat dog to get the parasite? Yeah, he had to eat dog to get the parasite out. That's the only way he get the parasite out. He had to eat dog. That's the consequence. You be like, man, I'm not eating that. That's dog. I gotta eat dog to get the parasite out of my body. They got remedies like that, right? Right. So we look at that same that word a call. You see that that word a call. You see that word in Bereshit two fifteen through seventeen. And Yahuwah Elohim took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And Yahuwah Elohim commanded the Adam, saying, "You may surely eat." Of every tree of the garden, a call. Does not the ear test the word, the ozen, 
goes on, tastes the word as the palate tastes the food. Eat. But what did he tell Adam to eat? From every tree. Trees bear fruit. Trees have herbs. Right? But it says also, verse 17, but for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it, a car. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. It's just like poison ivy. Did you see? You want to go on the tree and eat poison ivy? Or poison oak, four, three leaves, or poison oak has four leaves, poison, poison, poison oak has three leaves, poison ivy has four. He said, you ain't going to eat that, right? You're not going to eat it. This is Bereshit 126. And then you Yohalim said, let us make Adam in our own image. And now they're Muslim and let them have the meal of the fish of the sea. You can ask them, they'll teach you. The birds of the Shamaims, the livestock, and over all the Yalats. And every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. That's the behemoth, the oath, the Ramiz. Right in the Dagah. You saw Yahuwah created Adam in his own image. In the image of Yahuwah, you created him. Males, a car, and female, Nakaba. That's how he made Adam. He joined them together as one, and he made he made both male and female. Mother and father, son and daughter. All intertwined into one. Male animal, female animal. All intertwined into one. Right? So this is Bereshit 128, 20, 31. And Yahuwah Elohim Barak them, and Yahuwah said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the, the Dega, the fish of the sea, the yam over the birds, the oath of the Shamaims, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. That's the behemoth and the Ramiz, that's the creeping things. And, Yahuwah, and all Yahuwah said, Behold, I have given every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every, every tree that we see in its fruit, you shall have them for food, akla, akla. So what does that mean? That means their body gonna be continually purged of all diseases. Their body gonna be continually purged from all parasites. Their body gonna be continually purged from all uncleanness within. Because they're eating these things naturally. And then you look at Ruach, does not that oz, oz, ozan, ozin taste the word but Bacan test the utterance as the palate tastes the food. Now if they're eating it spiritually, it's gonna purge them from all the spiritual aspects of themselves that Yahuwah don't like. So you eating the natural food that purges a few from the natural things that cleans your body, and then the ruach cleanses you from all the spiritual part of yourself. And these are all things that the body don't like, the flesh don't like it. Verse 30 says. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the Shamaims, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for the food, and it was so. I've given it for his akla, right? And Yahuwah Elohim saw everything that he had made, and it was male ta'ub, and there was evening, and there was morning, shishiyum. And it was male ta'ub, right? Right? This is Leviticus 23, 9. Through 14, and Yahuwah spoke to Mashah, saying, Speak to the people of Yasharal and saying to them, When you come into the land that I will give you and reap a katsar, its katsir, you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruit, or rashith, because we know the first fruit is rashith, that's the beginning. It's the beginning of the start of the count towards the grain offerings, right? The grain offerings of the rashith of your harvest to the priest, right? You shall bring the sheaf of the rashith of your harvest to the kahan, and ye shall wave or noof the sheaf, the amer, before Yahuwah, so that you may be accepted, right? So you look at all these things that people do on a daily basis. He said, you're supposed to bring the very offering you're supposed to bring to the kahan, right? But we know Yahushua died, and he rose the third day, that you may offer a sacrifice of praise continually that you may be accepted. Morning, evening, and noon, and at midnight, and all, he say, all day long, that you may be accepted. Verse says, on that day after the Shabbat, the priest shall wave it. So that's right when the sun goes down. He said, you shall wave it. Priest, <laughs> everybody gotta wave it. And on that day, when you wave your noof, your sheaf, that means, when you, wave your, when you wave a noof, you have your hands. These are your hands. Look at your two branches, your hands. You got five fingers. You got ten total. 
your ten sephirahs, your whole body. Right? Ye shall offer a male lamb of a year old without blemish as a burnt offering to Yahuwah. He said, We know the lamb, behold the lamb of Yahuwah who took away the sin, the, who did it, he moved away and destroyed animal sacrifices of a sin and all the offerings that men did naturally and that they worshiped and that they were burdened by. He said, Your lamb got to be without blemish. He said, it's a car not kebab, male lamb, female lamb. There go your lamb. And guess what? You got, you, you got to be that lamb. Because he made Adam perfect. He made him a virgin. He was perfect. He was a virgin. And he was a without blemish. So therefore, he's perfect. He's a virgin without blemish. So therefore, you offering up your lamb without blemish. Which means that you can't have, you got to be have a perfect offering, a blameless offering. A tamim offering. Right. Verse 13 says, And the grain offering with it shall be two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil. That's what you're supposed to be. Fine flour mixed with oil. A food offering, a minka to Yahuwah. Because then we just read and talked about it at the time. It says a food offering, a meal offering is just like just like a lamb when you get praise to Yahuwah, right? To Yahuwah, a pleasing aroma, and to, to a drink offering it shall be of wine, a fourth of a hen. It got to be perfect measure. And he said, just ephah, just balances, mazum, and just bath. According to your cousin, y'all, Ezekiel. Verse 14, and you shall eat neither bread nor grain or parched fresh until that same day until you have brought the offering to your Allahim. Anything you offer to him, you, he got to be the first thing. He got to be the first thing you think about. He got to be the first thing you, your, your consciousness moves toward. Anything. And it is a statue, a kukpa, forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Right? So after we, when the sun goes down, that's what one has to do. You have to do a perfect offering. I say a mature offering. Something that is acceptable. It can be a prayer. It can be, it can be a, a prayer, a confession. It can be a song. It can be a wave offering. It can be a dance. It can be anything. But it has to be acceptable. And you got to offer it. You got to bring something. It ain't like, oh, I just do, don't do nothing. No, you got to do something. You got to bring something. And guess what happens? He said you'll be accepted. Right? Because you are now that kahan. You are that priest. And you have to offer it. It says, verse 15 says, and you shall count, after we do all that, when the sun goes down, you shall count seven full weeks from the day after the Shabbat, from the day that you brought the sheep of the wave offering. So, when this sun go down, then you start counting. You start counting seven weeks. It says, and you shall count 50 days to the day after the seventh Shabbat. And you shall present a grain offering of the new grain to Yahuwah. So just like we have a Shabbat today, and then the next day, as soon as the sun go down, we get an offering for waving the sheep. The same thing, after seven weeks, when the sun go down, you got another offering. Right? It's a practice. So after seven weeks goes by, when the Shabbat, 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 Shabbat come in, as soon as it comes in, you got to do it, wave the sheep. The same thing when it happens, when you do the, actually got to do it in haste. The same way you do it in haste when you take the Pesach. You do Pesach. You got to do it fast. Why? Because you know human nature, we'll forget. We'll, we'll put it off. We'll do something else. We'll go, our mind will wander to something else. It'll wander to a news article. It'll wander to a, a cell phone. It'll wander to something else. And then guess what? Now it ain't going to be first anymore. It's going to be something that's third or fourth on your list. And then it becomes, oh, I guess I'm not first in your life anymore. How about I take that from you? I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. And then, then I'll be first again. You don't want that to happen. Yeah, and if it says, and you shall count fifty weeks to the day after the seventh Shabbat, then you shall present a grain offering of new grain to Yahuwah. Right? So you count seven full weeks. Seven times seven is forty-nine days. Seven times seven. If you know multiplication, seven times seven is forty-nine days. Forty-nine four plus nine is thirteen. Ozen. Ozen. Does not the ear test the word as a plate does the food? 
don't it? Does not the ear taste the word as the plate does the food for 49 days? So if you look at this wave offering, this noof, this vibrational frequency, that's what you're going to be doing with your hands. It vibrate. That's what noof means. It means to vibrate. Guess what's going to happen? For 49 days, this has to be done for 49 days. You're, you're practicing offering for 49 days. It's a continual practice for 49 days. There's not an irritate the word as a plate does the food. It's continual. Ozen. Azan. The four, so after the 49th yum at evening, a new grain offering, the same way. So after 49 days, the 13th day, or 30th day, after 49 days at even, new grain offering. And it equals the 13. People say, why equals the 13? Right? When you look at the first day, when you start counting, to get towards the actual Pesach, you count 13 days. That 13th day even, that's the 14th day in between the suns. That's when Yahushua was killed. He was a lamb. Before the 14th day even, the 15th day, he was a kid slain in between the suns. It all correlates. Nothing just happens. Right? Nothing just happens. This is Leviticus 25, 1 through 8. And you who spoke to Meshach on Mount Sinai, Saying, speak to the people of Yashra and say to them, when you come into the land I give, that I give you, the land shall keep a Shabbat to Yahuwah. So you look at, look at six days you labor and the seventh you rest. Yahuwah still operates according to Bereshit. Everything that we do all operates according to Bereshit. Nothing happens. Nothing just happens. It says, for six years you will sow your field, and for six years you shall prune your vineyards and gather in its fruits. You know, gather in meat. You know, gathering, gathering, gathering the lamb and eat some flesh. Have a, have a fish fry. Bonfire. But in the seventh year, ye shall, there shall be a Shabbat of a solemn rest for the lamb. So Yahuwah looking out, Yahuwah is an environmentalist. He's always been an environmentalist. He don't like when y'all be destroying his property, his land. You just leave it and just destroy it and you don't even give it time to rest. Because it takes, it takes a lot of energy for the earth to produce fruit every single year. So you got to give it some time to rest. It says, a Shabbat to Yahuwah, the land got to rest. You shall not sow your field huh, or prune your vineyards, which means you're not going to be doing nothing for the seventh year. You're just going to be looking and watching. You ain't got to do nothing. Can you imagine? So for six years they're laboring to enter into a rest, a day, a year, where they don't got to do nothing. So can you imagine what type of year that is? Well, you ain't got to do nothing. Man, we ain't got to go in the field. We ain't got to do nothing. It's going to just produce what it's supposed to. And the only thing we got to do is just go eat. What does that sound like? Like the animals. That's how the animals live every day. So for a whole year, Yashara will get the experience what an animal gets to do. You know what? They ain't got to do nothing. He's like, man, we just put, man, it's on autopilot. We ain't got to do nothing. So you're laboring to enter into that rest. Isn't that what you're there saying in Hebrews? I pray. Yeah, they remain at their rest for the people of Yahuwah. Therefore, we labor to enter into that rest. That whole year, they ain't got to do nothing. Verse, four, verse 5 says, You shall not reap what grows of itself in your harvest, or gather the grapes of your undressed vines. It shall be a year of solemn rest for the land. Huh? The Shabbat of the land shall provide food huh? for you. So the land resting is going to provide the food for you. For yourself and for your male and female slaves, huh? That sounds like beginning. Let Adam have authority to fish, seed, fowls, and every creeping thing, and over all the earth. And let all the plants, herb, and seed be for food, both male and female slaves, and for the hired worker, and for the joiner who lives with you, and for your cattle, and for your wild animals that are in your land. All its yield shall be for food. You're a call. The same word. Same word from the beginning. Guess what it says? You shall count seven weeks of years 
seven times seven years. So that the time of the seven weeks of years shall give you 49 years. Oh, sound familiar? This is a short version we're getting ready to count. That's a longer version. Short term, long term. This long term to short term. Short term teach you about long term. And that long term, guess what? Long term goal is to enter into that rest that's coming up. But guess what? Short term, we're learning it every year. We do it every year to teach us about this. So seven times seven is 49 weeks, because it's 49 weeks per year. Like we look at seven times seven is 49 weeks, not 49 days. It's 49 weeks. Amazingly, right? And if we look at all these things, you say, man, this, this thing this thing will give me 49 years. Right? Because you look at 49 weeks, when we count it, when we count the years, we count it in weeks. Most people don't know that. Most people don't know that though. We count it in weeks. Right? So it says seven, nine, seven times seven is 49 weeks. It was a 13. 49 divided by 49 years divided by seven is what? Seven. Seven, 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 seven. Seven, 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 seven. Seven sevens. That's all it was. Seven sevens. So seven, we count six days you labor, seven you rest. Six years you sow, seven you rest the land. Seven, 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 seven. It doesn't stop. And equals a 13. It's not the, that's not the ear test the word as a plate does the food. The ozen. You bet ear is a very important thing. It's a very important thing. Right? This is Psalm Talim 119, 160, 160 through 166. Thy word, thy debar is true. The bar, thy the bar or ama, thy the bar is true, or the bar ama. From the beginning. Huh? From the beginning. The word for beginning is rush. From the beginning. It says, and every one of thy righteous judgments endures forever. It says, princes or sar have persecuted me without a cause. Without, without any cause, what are you persecuting me for? But my heart standeth in awe of thy debar. It's not the ear taste the word. The ozen taste the word as the plate does the food. Verse 162, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. I hate and abhor lying, but thy Torah do I love. Seven or seven times a day do I halal thee because of thy righteous judgments. Or Sheba or Sheba. Yum. Seven times a day. Seven times seven is 49. That's a week. You Dawood said I do this a week. Seven times seven. I do it seven times a day. Seven times seven is 49. This is the 13. Do not the ear taste the word as a plate does a food. Don't it? Don't it? Oh, taste and see. Don't it, don't it taste it? But can it taste? Does not the ear taste the word? But can it? Verse, one, verse 165. Great shalom have they that love thy Torah, and nothing shall offend them. He's like, man, look at here. Did that offend people to do all that? To go just like it was in the beginning? He's like, six, day, six years you sow, seven years you read. That line in the beginning. 49 day count, all that line up with the Jew, all that line up with the year release and the day we don't got the rest, we're innocent to that labor. Waving a perfect offering with a perfect lamb as a male, male lamb, female lamb, female lamb. Does that offend people? Verse 166, Yahuwah, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. You see what the, people saying, why he do this? Because he learning it weekly. He learning it, how you say, monthly. And he learned, it, he learned it yearly. Weekly, monthly, and yearly. He was making sure he keep those things in front between his eyes. Weekly, monthly, and yearly. All right, this is, he says from the beginning. That word from the beginning is rosh. It means head, the top, the summit, the upper part, the chief, the front, the beginning, head, your mind, your mind, your, your rosh. From the beginning. From the beginning. He said, 
the bar of moth from the beginning. He's literally saying, your word is truth in my mind, at the summit of my mind. And you added that, that word for Rosh, you added the numerical value is 200 equals to two. He said, just like my two hemispheres in my brain, what they call my brain, your mind, that your corpus callosum separates your left and your right brain. He said, it's just like that. It's at the summit of my mind, in the front. He said, frontless between my eyes, in the beginning. Frontless between my eyes, right? So you look at the barrel sheet one and five. It's in the beginning. All he created the Shamayans in the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Ruach of Allah was moving, hovering, and Murakaf al Panim upon the face of the waters. And Allah said, O Amar, let it be or, or higher or higher. And Allah saw the or, it was Tao. And Allah separated the light from the darkness, and Allah called the or yum, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, a kad yum. It was evening and morning. It was a kad yum. It's all one. Does not the ear taste the word as the plate does the food? Right, the word, because we know that word akad, it means one. Because there's only one a truth and there's only one debar. And you add up akad equals the 13. Does not the ear taste the word as the plate does the food? Hey, seven times a day, I praise you who? 13. Six years you sow, seven three reps. You should count seven seven weeks, seven times seven, 49. You should count 49 days when the sun go down, you wave your sheath, perfect offering, a lamb without blemish, just like Adam was in the gun. Without blemish, without spot. He was Tamim. There's a reason why, right? right? That word for it, princes, it says princes have persecuted me. That word for princes, sar. Prince, ruler, leader, chief, chieftain, overseer, rulers of rulers. He said, these people, people are what? Persecuting me. Rulers of rulers, a head, a chief, a ruler. He said, they persecuting me. He said, I hate and abhor lying. When we read at verse 163, he said, I hate and abhor what? Lies, deception, disappointment, falsehood, a sham, untruth. Was that an untruth I just said? Deceit, false, falsehood. He said, "I hate it. I hate a porn." So, what do you think people gotta hate? People say, "I don't, I don't, I love lying. I love a liar." Right? We talking about a perfect offering. He said, "I hate lying, but your Torah do I love?" He said, "I love your Torah." Right? This Proverbs six, sixteen to fifty three. These six things you will hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, right? A lying tongue, right? So all these are a part of what? Not having a perfect offering. Without blemish. Tamim offering. A mature offering. A righteous offering, right? It says what? A proud look. And a, a lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. Hands. A heart that divides with wicked imaginations. Feet being swift to running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies, and he that stoweth discord in one brother, right? We're looking at this, this word, these hands, right? That's because who are we getting ready to do? That word for hands is yod. That, that word for yod, that's the 10th letter of the alphabet. That's the 10th letter of the alphabet. Like when you go, when we talk about raising our branches, we got 10 fingers. Hands, we got ten fingers. He said, I lift what I'm gonna wave the sheaf? You got ten fingers. You got ten fingers, elephant, yard, right? This is what hand, strength, power, open hand. You know, people you you know they got proximate and remote. Both <laughs> he said people use the remote to control things. Right? People saying, Well, wait, my hands are remote control. Right? But it says right here, compulsion, concentrate, consecrate, right? It's your power, right? You look at your hands as your what? That's controlling things. That's controlling what you do. It promotes, right? He it, said, it, it, it what? It's your power. 
It's your power, right? So that we said what? He said, a proud look and a lying tongue, these are things you who hate. In the hands that shed innocent blood, that word for innocent is naki. That uh, hands that shed what? So if your hand does sheds clean, free, it says clear, innocent, free from guilt. Free from guilt. So if your if your hands shed blood, people that are free from guilt, innocent, blameless, clean, clear, exempted, innocency, unpunished, unpunished, guiltless. He said, Yo, who hates this? And so we're looking at, he said, cleanse your hands. He said, hands. Right? Look at your hands. Cause we, he said, that's what we getting ready to offer to you. Like, we getting ready to wave a sheep. But he like, you're in Yahoo 23, 9 through 14. My heart within me is broken because of the, the Nabi'in. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man who whom wine hath overcome because of Yahuwah and because of the words of Iskudah. For all the land is full of adulterers. Either they're idol worshippers or they literally committing adultery. But Yahuwah said, return to me, I'm your husband. I, am, I want to be your Baal. I want to be like Baal, like you worship Baal. It says, for because of swearing the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. Uh oh, nobody's everything you would call a drought, famine. It says, and, and their course is evil and their force is not right. For both the Nabi, the Kainim are profane. Yea, in my house I have found their wickedness, says Yahuwah. So you look at a body, he said, No, you're not, is your body the temple of Yahuwah? Where the Yahuwah's Ruach dwells in you, inside of him, inside of you? But he's looking in people's houses and he can see inside of your house, your body, your temple, your Mishkan, your Mikdash. And guess what he says? I have found their wickedness, says Yahuwah. Wherefore, their, their ways shall be unto them as a slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, says Yahuwah. And I have seen folly in the Nabi'im of Samaria, that Naba in, in Baal, and caused my people Yashra to err. I have seen also the Nabi'im in Jerusalem, and horrible thing, they commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen or kazak. Also, the hands, the same thing, the yod of evildoers. They strengthen their hand even more. That none does return from his wickedness, so they can have clean hands. That you, you can offer to you. So the wickedness within oneself is the dirty hands. He said, your hands are dirty. He said, my hands are clean, man. Look at my hands. I wash my hands like seven times a day. He like, man, your hands are dirty. What hands are you looking at? You were like, I looked in your house. Oh, you mean by your body? I looked inside your body. That's what I looked at. It says that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of they are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants of them like Gomorrah. As Gomorrah. He like, I, all I see is Sodom and Gomorrah. All I see is rocks, asteroids, fire, vapor, volcano eruption, earthquakes, tornado, whirlwinds. That's all I see. I don't see nothing else. Sodom and Gomorrah. Right, that's how you will see you when you do things. Yeah, Kaziah 22, 6 through 13. Behold, the princes of Yashra and you, every one according to his power, have been bent on shedding blood. How you do that? With your hands? So he's saying, my hands are clean. I wash my hands. He like, I washed them in well water, spring water. I got the best lotions and everything. But verse 7 says, father and mother are, mother are treated in contempt. He says, so, you, so your hands are dirty. This is drawing itself as extortion in your midst. That's how you say extortion, that's swindling and forcing people to give money, taking money. Huh? Your hands are dirty. The fatherless and the widows are wronged in you. You have despised my Kudash things and profaned my Shabbats. Man, even the seventh Shabbat. 
the seven years Shabbat. There are men among you who slander to shed blood. They ruin people's reputation just to kill them. He said, your hands are dirty. And people in you who eat on mountains, they commit lewdness in your midst. They eat food, sacrifice to idols on mountains. If you men uncover the fa your father, their father's nakedness in you, they violate women who are unclean in their menstrual period. He's like, man, your hands are dirty. One commits abomination with his neighbor's wife. Another lewdly defiles his daughter-in-law. Man, y'all dirty. Another in you violates his sister and his father's daughter. So you're telling me people that do this currently today in 20, in this years, this year, they're going to do a wave in the sheaf. They're going to do a wave off and they're going to offer something to Yahuwah and they think he's going to accept it in their mind. He said that you can be accepted, a lamb without blemish, male zakar, zakar and nakuba, male lamb, female lamb. He said you gotta be without blemish. And that lamb is you. That perfect human being is you. That tamim human being is you. Verse 12 says, in you they shall take bribes to shed blood. You take interest and profit and make gain of your neighbors by extortion. But me, you have forgotten, declares Yahuwah Elohim. Behold, I will strike my hand, huh? I'm going to strike my hand at the dishonest gain that you have made. That's why people say, when these, these things in your life, he just said, I'm going to take away the stuff you got. Your dishonest gain that you have made and at the blood that has been in your midst. Because you're dirty. You look like you dirty. All right, this is Leviticus 19:17. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, your brother or sister, or mother and father, or child. You shall not hate nobody in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him or her. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahuwah. Right, that word for vengeance, you shall not take vengeance. That word for vengeance is nakam, to avenge, to avenge oneself, to grudge, to avenge, to punish, to take vengeance. It also means the grudge, but look right here. Vengeance. Right, that word for the grudge, right, because it, it has multiple, multiple meanings, but it says what? It says you shall not bear, that word for bear is natar. That word for bear is natar, right? And that word was what? To guard, to keep to reserve, to maintain. You say you shouldn't even maintain, how you say, a grudge with your neighbor. He said, I'm gonna maintain it for four, uh, three years, four years, five years, 10 years. He said, you should not even maintain a grudge. It means a guard, to cherish, to cherish, to keep. You shouldn't even keep it. You shouldn't even reserve it. You shouldn't even have it in your feelings. Why? Because all these things will not allow your land to be without splinters and your, your wave offering to be accepted. He said you can't have a grudge. You can't even you can't even take vengeance. Or even have the feelings of taking your vengeance. Right? Right, so it says, behold, and, his, and then Yahuwah said, I'm be, behold, like when we skip back over. From Ezekiel, when we go back, go from Ezekiel, when Yahuwah says, I'm a, I'm a bear, I say, I'm a behold, I'm gonna strike your hand with the other dishonest game. Right, when, we, when we look at that word hand, that word is cough. Because when Yahuwah said, What? I'm a, I'm a what? I'm gonna strike your dishonest game. That word is cough. The only reason I put it here is because I want you to sh show you what's in people's hand. Because some people have grudges. Some people have grudges in their hand. 
and they holding it. You should, they maintaining it in their hand. Because you know, when you have grudges, you gotta you, you using your hands to control somebody. It's like a puppet master, like you got strings on somebody. Right? But it said right here, he said, I'm a, but he said, but I will strike my hand in your dishonest game. Right? When Yahuwah says, when you have a grudge and you have all these things going on, and Yahuwah says, I'm gonna strike your hand, I'm gonna strike my hand at your dishonest game. He said, what? Your palm, your soul, the palm of your hand, the palm. Say so your branches. Because guess what? Your hand is your branches. Your hand is your branches. Your hand is your branches. Your ten fingers. He said, I'm going to strike my hand again at your dishonest game. That's what he said I'm going to do. Because you have the things you do in Yahuwah's miss and you have a grudge. He said, I'm going to strike the hand of your dishonest game. This is Shemuth, Exodus 12, 8 through 16. Then Amalek came forth with Yashurah, or Everdeen. So Meshach said to Yahushua, Choose for us men and go, up, go, and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of Yahuwah in my hand. So Yahushua did as Meshach told him and fought with Amalek while Meshach and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Meshach held up his hand, his yod, he held up his yod, his hand, Yasharal prevailed. And whenever he lowered his yod, Amalek prevailed. So you look at all the things that happens in your life. You look at all the tests and trials that happen to you. And when you don't lift up your hands in the, in the offering, guess what happens? The, the demons, the other spirits, Satan are going to get, how you say, he's going to prevail over you. Because when you're, when you're not without spot and without blemish, he's going to prevail. Verse 12 says, but Meshach's hands grew weary. So they took a stone, huh, a, a bin, because you know the stone is a, a father and a son, and put it under him. And he put it under him. And he sat on it while Aaron and Hur held up his hands. One, it says, one on one side and the other, and the other on the other side. So his hands, his yod, were steady until the going down of the sun. He got a little help from the men on the left and on the right, and he had the stone under him. Because he said, Barak is the wise man who built his house on a rock. Because when Yahushua was crucified, he was crucified between two thieves. And those two hands was his sheath. How you say his noof. And it vibrated. But he had to get a little help, though. He had to get a little help. So ask yourself this question. Is one willing to get, to accept help? To wave your sheep. Because how are one going to wave their sheep? How are you going to do it? You going to do it on your own? He said you're going to need help. Because he took a stone and he put, it, he put himself under a stone, a bin. And he had men on the left and on the right. And his hands grew weary. And he kept his, and he kept his hands, he, kept his, he was waving his sheep until the sun went down. And had he brought them down, they would lose. He said, are you willing to accept help to keep your sheep, to wave your sheep? Verse 13 says, and Yahushua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. Right. Then Yahuwah said to Masha, write this as a memorial, oh, a reminder. Here we go. Because remember, we just took Pesach. That was a reminder to let you know of what? That Yahuwah brought you out of the land of Israel. But he said, write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua, Yahushua, Yahushua. That word for ear is Azum. The same word that you saw does not eat. You taste the word as the plate of the food. Ozen. The ears are important. He said, recite it in the ear of Joshua. People say, I don't want to listen. Well, guess what? When a vegetable comes, 
guess what's gonna happen? He gonna block that thing. I don't want that. It's purging and all the evil out of you. He says, that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under Shemaim. That's what he told him to write. And Mashiach built an altar and called the name of it, Yahuwah is my banner. Saying a hand huh? upon the throne of Yahuwah. Yahuwah will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. A hand upon the throne of Yahuwah. Ear, a zoom, hearing, Yahuwah is my banner. Right, the word for Yahuwah is my banner is Yahuwah Nisi. Yahuwah Nasi. Yahuwah Nasi. Yahuwah is my banner. Right? So how is one willing to accept Yahuwah as their banner? And to put their foot under a bin, the father and the son, and build a house on a rock? Will, some, will, will you actually allow yourself to get some help to hold your arms up? That you can do a wave off him? He said, Yahuwah is my banner. Yahuwah Nisi. This is 2 Chronicles, Dabari Hayamim 6, 12-30. Then Shaluma stood before the altar of Yahuwah in the presence of the assembly of Yasharal and spread out his hands. Shaluma had made a bronze platform five cubits long and five cubits wide and three cubits high. And he sat and he sat in the court and he stood on it. Then he knelt on his knees in the presence of all the assembly of Yashrael and spread out his hands towards Shamaim and said, Yahuwah Allahim of Yashrael, there is no Allahim like you in the Shamaim on the earth. Keep covenant and showing steadfast love to your servant who walk before you with all their heart, who have kept with your servant, Daoud, my father, what you declared to him. Right when you say right here, and it says, Then your Shaluma stood before the altar of Yahuwah in the presence of the assembly of Yasharal and spread out his hands. Then your Shaluma made a plat bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, right? Five cubits plus five cubits plus three cubits equals a 13. Does not the ear taste the word as a plate does the food? Like you say, or is one going to block the information and block the knowledge? Block the binakuma da'a. Why? Because Satan wants to continue to have a stronghold on people's mind. It equals a 13. 13. Right, verse, skipping down. Verse 15 continue. He says, you spoke with your mouth and with your hand have fulfilled it to this day. Now therefore, Yahuwah, Elohim of Yashorah, keep for your servant, Daoud, my father, what you have promised him. What you have promised him. He said, keep it. This is right here, saying, You shall not lack a man to sit on the throne before me on the throne of Yasharal. If only your sons pay close attention to their, their way to walk in my Torah as you have walked before me. Now, therefore, O Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharal, let your word be confirmed which you have spoken to your servant Dawud. But, but will Yahuwah indeed dwell with man on earth? Behold, Shamayim and the highest Shamayim cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built? Huh? He said, how much less this natural house I've built? Made of gold. He's like, Shamayim, can he hire? He said, the Shamayim and the highest Shamayim cannot contain you. He said, Yahuwah can't be in a place. He said, Yahuwah exists beyond that. He's beyond that. They can't even contain him. Verse 19 says, Yet have regard to my prayer, to the prayer of your servant, and to his plea. So what do you think your people get ready to do? Say so you're gonna be praying, you're gonna be pleading, you're gonna be lifting your hands. It's like Shaluma did right here. He built a he built a platform that was five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high. 
He was a 13. Does not the ear place the word as a plate does the food? And he built that house. But he says, I built my altar is greater than that house. My altar is, my offering is greater than the house itself. Verse 19 says, Yet have regard to the prayer of thy servant and to his plea, Yahuwah, my Elohim, listening to the cry and to the prayer that your servant prays before you, that your eyes may be open day and night toward this house. Know ye not that your body is the house of Yahuwah? Know ye not? He said, towards this house, the place where you have promised and set your name, that you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers toward this place. So you look at your body as that natural that house, that house of Yahuwah, that prayer that you offer, he's telling Yahuwah, he's asking Yahuwah to listen to his prayer. And he built an altar, five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high. Thirteen. And he lifted his hands to Shamaim. That's what we're getting ready to do. Wave the sheep. He ready to wave the sheep. And he asked you to listen to my prayer. He said, guess what he said? 21. And listen to my pleas, listen to the pleas of your servant and your people, Yashara. When they pray toward this place and listen to from Shamaim, your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. Huh? Forgive. People said, why, why, why did then y'all pray three times a day? And he was offering up. Why? He was confessing his sins. He was, he was confessing the sins. He's like, forgive. He said, when you lift up your hands, he said, when you pray, and he was lifting up his hands and he was doing that. Same thing Mashiach was doing. He was lifting up his hands. Man on the right now, he was building on the stone. But he said, I'm going to strike my hand against your, your game, your unjust game. Verse 22 to 28. If a man sin against his neighbor and is made, is just made to take an oath and comes and swears his oath before your altar in this house, then hear from Shamaim and act and judge your servants, repaying the guilty by bringing his conduct on his own head and vindicating the righteous by rewarding him according to his righteousness. Verse 24. If if your people, Yasharal, are defeated before the enemy because they have sinned against you, huh? and they turn again, acknowledge your name, and pray and plead with you in this house, then hear from Shamaim and forgive the sin of your people, Yasharal, and bring them again to the land that you gave them to them and to their fathers. When Shamaim is shut up and there is no rain because they sinned against you, does not, as the, how you say, does not the word, as the rain and snow come down from Shawnee so that the bar come out of my mouth, which means there ain't no bar, it's a famine. It's a famine. Because they sin against you. If they pray toward this place and acknowledge your name and turn from their sin, when you afflict them, when I strike my hand at your unjust gain, with your, with your gain, because of your wicked deeds, then hear and Shamaim and forgive their sins of your servants, your people, Yashra. When you teach, huh? When you teach them the good way in which they should walk and grant rain upon your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. So if you who ain't giving no rain, you're not growing. Because you know fresh water bring forth rain. But then he says you're gonna teach them the good way. When he made it in the beginning, he said. It was good the first day. It was good the second day. It was good the third day. It was good the fourth day. It was good the sixth day. It was good, how you say, on the seventh day. That's the good way. Mayo towel. It says, and grant them rain, because if you don't get no rain, you ain't got no crop. You ain't got no food. And you ain't gonna have no branches. And you ain't gonna have nothing to offer in your mind. If you don't get no rain, if you don't get no bar, no rain and snow coming down from Shamayim, you have no rain, you have nothing in your consciousness, you have nothing to offer. You have a famine in your body. And he said, how do you know a person got a famine? They got nothing to offer. Why? Because they're blocking the rain. They're blocking the, the herbs. They're blocking the things that are purging. They're blocking it. They got an umbrella. And he said, you can stand under my umbrella. Ella, Ella, you can stand under my control. Because somebody else got control. Verse 28. If there be a famine in the land, if there is a pestilence, a blight, that's, that's literally 
plant disease or mildew or locust or caterpillar if their enemies besage them in the land of, at their gates whatever plague whatever sickness is there there is whatever prayer whatever plea is made by any man or by all your people Yashara, each knowing his own affliction. So you telling me, y'all, yeah, you don't know your own affliction. And his sorrow, you don't know your own sorrow. And stretching out his hands toward his house, so you don't know your own stuff. People say, you know your own affliction, you know your sorrow, and he's stretching out your hands in your house. Then hear from Shawang your dwelling place, and forgive and render to each whose heart you know, according to all his ways, for you. That's what you get ready to do. You only know the hearts of the children of mankind. That they may fear you and walk in your ways all the days that they live in the land that you gave their, our fathers. What are you doing in the land? Farming. You're master shepherds, master farmers. You're taking care of families and households. You're taking care of each other. That's what you're supposed to do. But we just read in your cousin on what they were doing. And you would say, I'm going to strike my cough, my hand at them. My yard at them, at their game, right? But you say, you don't know your own affliction. You know your own affliction. You know your sorrow. And then stretching out your hands and waving your sheep, you know what you're supposed to do. They know you. Each person know them. And you know the hearts of mankind. Right? It's Yeshua 62, 10 through to 12. Go through the gates. Go through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up. Build up the highway. Clear it of stone. What do you do that at? In a field. When you get ready to plant and sow, sow seed, you got to get rid of the stones. It says, lift up a signal over the peoples. Lift up a signal over the peoples. What do you think you're ready to do right now? He said, you got to be a lamb without spot. He said, you got to weigh the sheep. You get ready to lift your hands. And he said, you got to lift up a signal for the people. What people? People of the earth. Verse 11 says, Behold, you who has proclaimed to the end of the earth. This is not, people think, oh yeah, you know, this is for my private time in the rooms and my, in my life and the other things. No, nah, he said, proclaim it to the end of the earth. Say to the daughter of Saum, Behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. It goes before him. Before he comes back, he sends recompense to the world. So either you're a part of the reward or you're going to be a part of the people getting recompensed. Verse 12 says, and they, and they shall be called the Kudash people, the redeemed of Yahuwah. And they should be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Right? He says, go through the gate, lift up a signal for the people. That word for a signal is Nasi. Oh, you mean Yahuwah Nasi. He said he built he built an altar. He built it. He called it Yahuwah Nasi. 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 He said, lift up a Nasi for the people. A Nasi. A signal. Something lifted up. A standard. A signal pole. An ensign. A banner. A flag. A flagstaff. A signal. A token. Right? A sail. Right? Some people want to be the sale. Some people want to be want to be the signal, but they but their lifestyle is stained. How are you saying they don't have perfect hands? They they don't have a perfect life. He said their whole their whole thing is, is, is gossip and slander and hatred and jealousy and envy and strife and lying. That's what their whole that's their whole standard. That's been their whole standard. It built upon the foundations of of money made from evil doing. Built upon from the foundations of lying. And transform themselves into a molecule of light. That's what that's what people have offered up. He said, lift up this standard for the people. Something lifted up. This signal, this ensign, this nasi. Right? This Matthew Yahoo 8, 19 through 20. And a scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Yahushua said to him, Foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the son of Adam has nowhere to lay his head. So people say, I want to follow this standard. I want to follow this standard, who, you, who Yahushua Mashiach is. But he's like, I ain't got nowhere to lay my head. How you saying? I'm posing as somebody poor right now. 
because you know why he did that? Because you know why people want to follow you? Because you, if you got a lot of money, you got many friends. If you got a lot going for yourself, oh man, everybody want to be with you. Man, if you got a whole bunch of stuff, man, everybody want to be close to you. But if you ain't got nothing, and you ain't got nowhere to lay your head, who gonna want to follow you? Follow you where? It's Luke or Yah, 14, 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his fa own mo father and mother, or he said doesn't allow his father and mother to deter him from coming to follow me, and wife and children, and wives and children, and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. He said, he said, you can't even you can't even follow me. You can't even be you can't even be, I say, in my training program. Because Yahusha's standard during this time was way higher than everybody else. He said, but in order for you to be actually do this, you have to let everything go. And you can't allow anything to deter you. Why? Because we're going back to the beginning. And if you gotta go back to the beginning, you're gonna have to get rid of everything. And you man, I ain't even got nowhere to lay my head. I ain't got no, he said, I ain't got nowhere to lay my head. Right, this is Matthew 19, 16 through 30. And behold, a man came up to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to eternal eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me what is good? <laughs> he just said, and stand in the ways and, and see. He said, Live up a standard for the people. He said, You who are you know the hearts of men? He said, Teach us the good way. You know what he told him? In Dabri Hayami, he said, teach us the good way. He said, why do you ask me what is good? There's only one who is good. If you will enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, which one? Yahushua said, you shall not murder. No, he said, Yahushua said, the Feast of Tabernacles. He said, Pesach. He said, First fruit, waving the sheath. No, 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 no. He said, Tarua, get you a trumpet, go in the street. He said, he said that. He said, you shall not murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. No, he said, I thought he said, Kogsuka. Feast of Booths, Soko, Pasak, or Pasak with a at the end. He said that, right? No. He said, bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know why he said that? Because if you can't do that, all your pasaks and all your offerings and all the things you do on a daily basis, you who don't accept none of it. He don't even accept it. All your cogs, your muahs, your feasts, your songs, everything you do, he doesn't accept that. All your prayers, your prayer offerings, your meat offerings, your fasting, your prayer, your giving to the poor, the sick. And if you do all that, he's like, you wasting your time. I thought my hands were clean. I washed my hands seven times a day. Now he's not talking about your hands. Look at you. People say, no, look. He said, young man said, all these things I kept. He's like, I did it. What do I lack? He like, I did that. See, you can't get me on that. All the feast days I did, everything I done, I did it. Yahushua said to him, because you know, Yahushua know, he said, Yahuwah, you know all the hearts of men, their sorrow, their affliction, as we just read when Shalom would lift his hands up. He said, you already know that. But he said, Yahushua said to him, if you would be perfect, uh-oh, Tamim, a land without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, perfect, if you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in Shamaim and come and follow me. If you're gonna be a perfect sacrifice. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He had a lot of stuff. And Yahushua said to his disciples, Truly, truly, I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of Shamaim. Why? Because they don't have no need for Yahushua. I can do everything. I can buy everything I want. Usually, I ain't got nowhere to lay my head. And he pretending to be poor. 
His father was a carpenter. He had a place to stay, everything. He was pretending to be poor. He was pretending to have nothing. He was only pretending to test people's heart. That's the only reason he was doing it. Again, I tell you, it is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of Yahuwah. Why? Because the eye of a needle is a passageway. When you stack a, a stack a camel up with a bunch of your junk and a bunch of your trash and all your possessions, you ain't gonna be able to go through that. You ain't gonna be able to go through that little that little that little gap because it's gonna fall off, hit the side. It's gonna block the other people from getting through. So therefore, you can't carry all that stuff. They traveled in camels. They didn't have an Escalade back in the day. They didn't have a, a P4 Range Rover. They didn't, have, they didn't have a Tesla Model Model Y. Like they didn't have that. Well, you could pack your car with stuff. And he says, when the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? He like, man, who, go, who gonna be saved? But Yahushua looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with Yahuwah, all things are possible. They like, because you are a carnal-minded individual. That's the only reason you think that way. Who can be saved? Because you're carnal-minded. Then Cobb said, to, to, said, said in reply, See, we have left everything to follow you. See, they like, we done did it. We done follow you everything. What then, ha what then will we have? We done left everything. We left our everything to follow you. Remember, they didn't follow him. They followed him in the same community. They all in the same vicinity, in the same community. Yahushua said to them, Truly, truly, I said to you, in the new world, when the son of Adam will sit on his glory, sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit upon thro twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Yashara. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake. These are man, when he's saying these things, he's saying it of Yahudim people who keep righteous laws and principles. He's saying that if you leave those people. Like, the people ain't looking at that. The only thing they look at, well, I'm going to leave these people who are doing wrong and all that. No, Yahushua came to say the lost and the people who's off. He's talking about people who are, they doing righteous principles and laws and all the things that people ever, they do. These righteous principles, these righteous people. He like, yeah, you got to go above them. See, this is that above and, above and beyond type walk. Above feast day keepers and all that, who murder and commit adultery and steal and bear false witness and hatred from their honor, only your honor, mother and father. Hey man, you who's your way above that? His walk way above that. He say way above your. He say. He said everyone who has left houses and brothers and fathers and mothers and sisters and children lands for my name's sake will be will receive a hundredfold in eternal life. Why? But when you who should wanted them to do something, they went and left everything to do. But many who are first will be last. And the last first. He's like, y'all were first. He said, they're going to be last, and the last going to be first. All right, skip getting through. You see Luke, Oriah 11, 30, 37 to 42. When Yahushua had finished speaking, a Pharisee invited him to eat with him. So he went in and reclined at the table. But the Pharisee was surprised when he noticed that Yahushua did not, did not first wash it before, his, before the meal. Now, Yahushua already posing as a poor person. He already posing as a person who had nowhere to lay his head. Then he getting all his, he got all his disciples following him, who got jobs, who got all these things, and they just like we're gonna forsake all and follow you. So they got things they can go back to, but now he's posing as this poor guy, and he ain't he, wa he ain't washing his hands like a poor guy. You know, a poor person don't wash their hands; they just eat. So he's posing as this poor guy just to see how people react. And he says, verse thirty nine says, then Yahushua said, then Yahushua said to him, now then you Pharisee, clean the outside of the cup in a dish, but inside. He said, but now you Pharisee, clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. The him we just talked about. And your cause y'all. He said, I'm gonna strike my hand at your unjust gang. What do you think his hand is right here? This is his hand right here. He hitting him with the truth. This is his hand right here. I'm gonna strike my hand at your unjust gang. Because he said all the widows are treated for unfalsely. All the people committing adultery, people doing things on mountains, people doing all these things. And then you trying to get money. 
He's like, all these things I kept from my youth up, youth up. People trying to get money. He's like, you, people doing all this, you Pharisee, and you, all you think you thinking about is money and getting some money, greed and wickedness, and sleeping around. That's all you're thinking about. Verse 40 says, you foolish people. This is what he said. Did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? So you were like, I made the outside body. Just like Shaluma said, we're going to pray in this house, right? Lift up our hands. He said, you know, the, you know the affliction and you know those who are, their sicknesses and the things that they're dealing with. You know all the hearts of men. And you're going to judge according to their hearts when they lift their hands up on this wave in the sheep. He's going he gonna to judge you. People think, oh, when you do your sheep offering in the evening when the sun goes down, who is going to judge you? Whether you're accepted or not. He's going to judge. He's like American Idol. Like they do idol worship, he'd be like, that was awful. You know how they do? Hit the buzzer. Right? He's going to judge. And get what happens. He says, but now, as for what is inside of you, he says, you foolish people, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? But now, as for what is inside you, be generous to the poor. Huh? See what he did? He was posing as a poor person who don't wash their hands and they eat. And he said, be generous to the poor. Because he, all he was thinking about was money and wickedness. And guess what? He was judging him based upon what? He don't give to the poor. He got all that money. He says, and everything will be clean for you, huh? He said, be generous and give to the poor and everything will be clean. Which means you have a, you have a, a perfect offering. You have an innocent offering. But get what he said. Woe to you Pharisees, because you give Yahuwah a tenth of your mint, rue, and all kinds of garden herbs. But you, you neglect justice and love of Yahuwah. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. So he never said nothing about the mint and the garden herb. That's good. You're supposed to eat them. Does not the ear taste the word as the plate does the food? But you know what people do? Man, forget that mint, the herbs and all that. We don't need to do that. Exactly. And the same thing you leave off that, because if you, if you leave off the thing he left in the beginning for men to do, and guess what happens? You forsake farming, and then guess what you do? You cleave the malice. And then guess what? Justice, in the service of judgment and justice, you don't care. And you don't love Yahuwah anymore. You don't even allow the land to keep the Shabbats. Right? All that's important, right? This is Matthew 15, 1 through 20. Then the Pharisee and the scribe came to Yahushua from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? So they do not wash their hands when they eat, because they are posing as poor people, poor men who have nothing. Because they want to show people how you treat the poor. That's why. Look how you treat. The poor. He said, when they eat, he answered them. And why do you break the commandment of Yahuwah for the sake of your traditions? So now he's coming at you attacking the poor people. We just a bunch of poor men just walking around the city who forsook all and we don't got nothing. And you attacking us like we some criminals or something. He answered them. And why do you break the commandment of Yahuwah for the sake of your, position, your traditions? For Yahuwah commanded, honor thy father and thy mother, and who reviles his father and mother must surely die. But you say, if anyone tells his father and mother what you would have gained from me is given to Yahuwah. He indeed, he need not honor father and mother, his mother. He's like, as long as you give me some money, man, I'm going to care about that. Because you're supposed to honor your mother and your, mother and your father. So for the sake of your traditions, you have made void the word of Yahuwah. You, you made void the Ten Commandments that I gave you. You know, when I appeared on Sinai, floating on the wings of the wind and all that, appeared in trumpets and people touching the mountain, don't touch the mountain, all that, and the sound, they heard my voice and all that. You know, that, that, that spectacular thing you saw? You know, remember that? Because that's all I asked you all to do. But no, nah, you don't want to do it. But he said, you get what he said, you hypocrites. So you're a hypocrite if you honor your mother and your father. He said, well did Yeshayahu Naba of you when he said, this people honor me with, with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 
in vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines and commandments of men. Wow, that's what they do. They do that. And that's what they do today. You don't honor our traditions, and then guess what they do? They keep you away from your they keep you away from your mother and father. They ain't even you who should. And they don't how you dishonor your mother and your father for eight years, nine years, ten years, twelve years. You travel sea and land to go seek the word of Yahuwah, and you find out it's the commandments of men. And you'd be like, why are all these plagues happening to me? Why are all these things? Why are all these things happening in my life? It's not, it's not rocket science. Why is everything working for them? Because they're, they're doing something, and they're commanding you not to, but they're doing it. That's why. Which that's still deceit. Verse 10 says, And he called the people to him, and he said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of your mouth. This defiles a person. Then the disciples came to, and said to him, do you, not, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Shamayim father have not planted is rooted up. <laughs> Notice how he's talking about you offended, and then he goes right back to garden terms. But not human beings, not man, male, and female, they don't have these garden terms in their mind. It's not frontless between their eyes, and therefore the wisdom of it doesn't come out. And then one doesn't sound like Yahushua. And they won't be the person, when Yahushua was crucified, they said, you sound like him. People don't want to sound like Yahushua. That's why they don't want nothing from the beginning. They don't want to understand it. Because you don't want to actually have that wisdom in Kukman, and it comes out of your mouth, and you start, when you start talking to people, and it starts coming out of your mouth, and then guess what, you sound just like him. I don't want to sound like Yahushua Mashiach. Mm -mm. No, I want to be me. He says, but Kaf said to him, explain the parable. Actually, no. Verse 30, he, he says, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted is rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind gods. Because if you don't know nothing about plants and harvesting and planting and all these things, you say, you blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both fall into a pit. But Kaf said to him, explain the parable to us. And he said, are you still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes out of the mouth passes in the, into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of your mouth proceeds from the heart? And this is the foul of the person? So out of, your, out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual morality, theft, false witness, and slander. These are what defile the person, but to eat with unwashed hands has not defiled anyone. Did Yahushua tell people not to wash their hands? Because you know people say, see, I ain't got to wash my hands. See, Yahushua is posing as a poor person. Trying to show people how they treat poor people. And the same people who are treating the poor people and trying to induce their commandments have evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual morality, death, false witness, and slander. I thought my hands were clean. I wash my hands seven times a day. Man, I keep tradition of the elders. He's like, man, I'm not looking at your outward hands. I'm looking at your inward hands. That, you know, that sheep you're getting ready to raise. He's like, I'm looking at that. He's like, I'm looking at them, them hands. What do you mean, what hands? I thought my hands were clean. He said, I made the inside and outside. He but first... Do the inside, right? Matthew 23, 24 to 26. You blind guys straining the neck and swallowing a camel. Literally. Woe to you, scribes and fairies and hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate. Does not the ear taste the word as the plate does the food? As the ear, does the palate taste the food? The mouth? He said, you clean the outside of the plate, the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. So what's good? What good is you cleaning and washing your hands outwardly, going to clean cups and pots and pans to eat, everything decked out, nice spices and all these things, and then guess what? Your inward man, your inward hands are wicked, and you can't offer nothing. Verse twenty-six: You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup. Clean your inward man, clean your inner hands, your inner body, and the plate that the outside may be clean also. Then you still wash your hands 
then I ain't got nothing to say about your hands being washed and your traditions of your elders and all this stuff that you people proclaim. I ain't got nothing to say. I wouldn't have had nothing to say if your inward man was clean. You think Yahushua would have condemned him? How come you're not washing your hands? And he looked at them because he knew the hearts of men. No problem. We're going to wash our hands. He's going to look at the inward part of that person. He'll be like, man, you, man, you are a clean individual, both inwardly and outwardly. Yahushua wouldn't have said nothing. But being that they were dirty on the inside, you, man, y'all dirty. Y'all some dirty people. So therefore, man, forget about your washing your hands of your outward man. Man, y'all need to go, you need to clean your inward man. This is Yochanan 12, 27 to 33. Now is my soul trouble. What shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I am come to this hour. Father, kabod your name. This, then a voice from Shawrain said, I'll kabod it and I will do it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said, it had thundered. Others said, wait, and Malach has spoken to him. Yahushua answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. And Yahuwah spoke to Masha. I mean, Masha spoke to the ears of Aharon, or to the ears of Yahushua. And what did he say? He said, man, Yahuwah said, man, build an altar. He said, I'm going I'm to I'm destroy Amalek. But he said, build an altar. And he called it Yahuwah Nisi. So Yahuwah, Yahushua answered, this voice came for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the rule of this world be cast out. And when I, I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. I'm going to be lifted up. I'm going to be a Nasi. He said, go through, lift up a standard for the people. I'm going to be the standard. I'm the perfect offering. I'm the Nasi. I'm the perfect offering. I'm the hands that are lifted up. I'm the five cubits, five cubits. I'm the 13. I'm the person that will that when he built the altar. Five cubits, five cubits, three cubits width. That's me. He, he said this to show what type of kind of death he was going to die. Right, this is Matthew 26, 36 through 46. Then Yahushua went with them to the place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go there and pray. And taking with him Kaf and two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Didn't we just read that in, in Second Chronicles? He said, we, you know the affliction and the sorrow of thy people, and you know the hearts that within them, and you adjust them according to their heart, to them when they lift your hands up to you and pray in this house. But where is he at? He in a garden. He's in a garden. He's in a place called Gethsemane. He's in a garden. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful. Because he said, I, we, you know the, how, the sorrow of men and their affliction. They know the sorrow and they know their affliction. So therefore, let them pray. Let them lift their hands up to this place. And then you judge them according to their hearts. He said, my, my soul is very sorrowful on that. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but as you will. Oh, that he's waving his shade. And he came to the disciples and said to them, so I found them sleeping. And he said to the cop, so you could not watch me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. That's the only reason. The Ruach indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's why you got to do it in haste, because the flesh is weak. Because if you don't do your, your, you don't, you don't do your offerings in haste, then your flesh is weak. And people keep thinking that it's strong. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed. My father, this says, if this cannot pass unless I drink, your will be done. Yeah, he waving the sheep. And again, he came and found them sleeping, but their eyes were very heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed the third time, saying the same words again. 
Then he came to his disciples and said to them, sleep on, sleep and take your rest. Rest on later. See, the hour is at hand. The son of Adam is betrayed in the, in the hands of sinners. Rise and let us be going. See, the betrayer is at hand. But when he rose from the grave, they forgot everything he said. Because you know why? Does not the ear taste the words, the plate does the food? But for some reason, they rejected it. They rejected it. They didn't even remember when he rose. They didn't even remember what he said. Because they didn't eat his word. That's why he had to go explain it again. These are the words that I spoke to you while I was with you, that all things will be fulfilled in the in the Torah, in the Law of Mashah, in the Talim, and all the writings that you don't know about concerning me. He had to do it again. Because they didn't eat it. Matthew 27, 11 through 14. Now Yahushua stood before the governor, and the, and the governor asked him, Are you the Malak of the Yahudim? Yahushua said, You have said so. He said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? Oh, you mean they have grudges? He said, you shouldn't have a grudge with anybody of your people, or your own people. He said, you shouldn't have a grudge. But he gave them no answer. Not even to a single charge. So that the governor was greatly amazed. He, had, he felt no grudge. But for some reason, they got grudges. They all got grudges against him. The same people who he was condemning. He like, look, see here? I ain't got nowhere to lay my head. I'm a poor person. You come at me with some commandments of me. Y'all don't even do what y'all supposed to do. And then now, you got a grudge against me because I told you the truth. Matthew 27, 27 through 44. The governor's headquarters, they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put on this scarlet robe on him. And twisting a crown of thorns and, uh, and put, it, put it on his head. And he read in his right hand and kneeling before him. And they mocked him, saying, Hail, Malachi the Yahudim. And they spit on him. And took a reed and struck him in the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of his robe and put on his own clothes and let him wear the crucifixion. Man, when Amalek came against Mashah, what did he do? He lifted up his hands. He had two priests on the left and on the right, one on the right and one on the left, and then he put a stone underneath his foot. Right, the Father and the Son. And every time he lifted his hand up, he prevailed. He prevailed, they prevailed every time he lifted his hand up. The heart, more than that, and he, he was getting weary and weak, and he lift, helped lift his hand up even more. Why? So they can win. It says 32, and as they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. Man, his hands weak. Then, they, then Mashal needs somebody, two people to help him lift his hands up even higher when they'll find Amalek. Oh, you mean Yahuwah Nisi. Yahuwah Nisi. And when they came, to the place called Golgotha, which means a place of skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it, because he's he's a standard. How you say, lift up a banner, Yahuwah is my banner. Because he's the standard. He's the banner. He's the one that's lifted up for the people. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots. People saying, why are you lifting your hands? Why are you waving a sheep? Cause you're gonna need some help to do that. Even Yahusha had to have help. Even Yahusha needed help. And people say, I'm better than Yahusha. I don't need no help. Verse 36, then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And, and over his head, they put his charge against him. They put his grudge, cause they had a grudge against him. Which read, this is Yahusha, the Malak of the Yahudin. They had a grudge against him. The two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. Those were, 
and those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads, saying, You who destroyed the temple and rebuilt it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of Yahuwah, come down from the cross. It's not that you taste the words the plate doesn't fool. Amazingly, Yahushua rejected their food. It says, So also the chief priests and the scribes and the elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. If he the Malachi Yasharal, let him come down from the cross. And we would believe him. If he came down, you would have lost. You wouldn't have been able to defeat death. You wouldn't even have been able to do a sheep offering with a perfect lamb and perfect spot and wrinkle. You wouldn't even be able to do it. Because he needed two people to hold, Mashiach needed two people to hold his hand up to fight that battle. And had he not, had his hands came down, you wouldn't be able to raise no sheath. You wouldn't even do it with no, no perfect lamb without spot or wrinkle. You wouldn't even know, understand it. You wouldn't know about female Zakar Nakaba. You wouldn't even know about how to weigh the sheath. You wouldn't even know how to do it properly. You'd have still been like the scribes and the Pharisees, like they did first fruit every single year until Mashiach came and he ain't accept not one of their wave offerings. He ain't accept not one of them. How does that, how do you think that make them feel? Man, I've been living all this life and you never accepted my offer? It said, he trusted in Allahim, let Allahim, Yahuwah, deliver him now if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of Yahuwah. And the two robbers who were crucified with him also revolved in the same way. They did the same thing. One on the left and one on the right. And he still got to keep his arms up. Because they all got grudges. He said, you should not bear the grudge against, your, he said, against your, one of your sons of your people. They are your own people. Even Pilate said, your own nation delivered me unto them for envy. He, he knew for envy they gave him to you. I know they envy you. I know they jealous of you. I know they got a grudge against you. I know. This Psalms 55, 1 through 9. Give ear to my prayer. Huh? Yahuwah, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Attend to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint and I moan because of the noise of the enemy. You hear all that noise he was hearing? They nagging him, they talking about him, people at the bottom talking about him, left and the right talking about him. But yeah, he just sitting on, he just sitting on, he just sitting on the rock. He said, because of oppression of the wicked, for they drop trouble upon me and in thine anger, they bear a grudge against me. My heart is in anguish within me, and the terrors of death have fallen me. Just like we talked about before. You know, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Fear and trembling has come upon me, and horror overwhelms me. He was saying, what is waving the sheaf is? He said, wave your sheaf. This is the first fruit right here. This is the first person to ever die this way. This is the first person to ever offer a sheaf that's actually perfect without spot, without any, anything wrong with it. Tamim, mature, perfect, beautiful. This is the first person. This is the first fruit right here. And I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove, and I will fly away and be at rest. He's like, man, I turn into a dove and fly away, just like the dove that left the ark and be at rest and find me an olive branch so I can build a nest. Yes, I would wander far away. I mean, I'll be way far away. Like, like Pharaoh told the children of Yashorah, man, go far away. I'll, I'll be just, he's like, you'd be like Adam, far away. I would lodge in the wilderness, he's like. He's like, man, I'm, he said, why people go in the wilderness? Why people leave places and cities? Because it is. He said, I ain't going nowhere near these people. He said, man, if I had that, I wouldn't have these nails in my hand. You see the mindset of people who walk like him? And he's like, man, look at here. If I had a place in the wilderness, this is where I would be at. In the middle of nowhere with trees all around, with a little cottage. His eye would hurry to find shelter from the raging winds and the tempest. Why? From these people. He said, destroy your hood, divide their tongues. Huh? He said, divide their tongues. He said, destroy your hood. Divide their tongues, for I see violence and strife in the city. He said, I see violence and strife. And he said, I know he know the hearts of men. He said, when they offer their prayer, I know their oppression and I know their sorrow. The double here, you mean chapter 6 says. Right, that word for a grudge, and that word is satan. 
They bear a grudge in me, Satan, they hate. They oppose, they bear a grudge. Retain animosity. They see, they maintain it. That's how we talked about the grudge before. They lurk, they persecute. He said, this will make people want to go in the wilderness. This will make people want to get in the car. Man, I ain't going nowhere near your city. I ain't going nowhere near your place. He said, ah, that's why. All you got to do is keep doing it. You keep everybody away. This is bare drug against, harassed, right? So you look at all this. He said, this is the wave in your sheath. How do you think his offering was perfect? If he'd have grudged back at him when they reviled at him, didn't, his offering wouldn't have been perfect. His offering, his, his sheaf that he's waving won't be perfect. And that's the same thing that happens to us. You can't allow people, you can't go into that. Why? Because then your sheaf ain't going to be perfect. Because you got to do it every single day. Morning, evening, noon. Morning, evening, noon. Your offerings are offering continually. So you have to be this for a whole 364. Oh, he's not going to accept your offer. All right, this is Luke Oriah 23:32. Two others were criminals who were led were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place called the place of skull, they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Yahushua said, Father, forgive them. Huh? He said, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He didn't hold a grudge against them, but they held a grudge against him. He didn't hold a grudge against them, but they held a grudge against him. He didn't do it. He prayed for them. And he asked Yahuwah to forgive them. For they don't even know what they're doing. And they cast lots and divided his garments. He said, how you know your sheep perfect? When you forgive people, when you ask your who to forgive other people. How you know, how you know? That's how you know. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, because they had a grudge. They still had a grudge, even after he forgave them. Even after he forgave them, they still had a grudge against them. I forgave you. But then they go and do it again. And guess what you gotta do? He saved others, let him save himself. If he the Mashiach of Yahuwah, guess what you got to do? Just the same thing. Forgive them, but they don't know what they do. That's the only way your offering going to be perfect. It don't matter who it is. It doesn't matter. It's Matthew 27, 45 and 54. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. Just like the beginning. It's not the ear taste the word, as a plate does the food. A cod. 49 day count. 13. 49 year count. 13. Five cubits, five cubits, Five cubits wide, five cubits wide, five, three cubits long. Thirteen. Seven times a day I praise Yahuwah. Thirteen. What did Yahushua name equal? Thirteen. There was darkness over the face of the deep. Everything correlates. For what? Over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Yahushua cried out with a loud voice, saying, Aliyah, Aliyah, Lama Sabbathana, that is, my Allahim, my Allahim, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling for Aliyah. Confuse their the language. Destroy Yahuwah. Destroy Yahuwah. He said, destroy Yahuwah. He said, destroy Yahuwah. Divide their tongues. Why do you think they, they in division right now? He said, they held a grudge against me. He said, divide their tongues. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave him the drink. But others said, wait, let's see whether all Yahoo will come and save him. And Yahushua cried out again with a loud voice, and you know the Ruach. They thought he was calling for all Yahoo. He said, divide their tongues. They don't understand nothing. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Huh? In two places. What was the word for Rosh? David Dallas said, he said, word, you're the bar, a moth, Rosh. Your word is true at the summit, at the Rosh, at the Rosh. And amazingly, Rosh equals two, and equals 200 equals two. 
It's split in two. He said, because even Shaluma said, we just read in Dari Hayami, he said, your temple, he's like, no place can contain you, let alone this temple I built. He's like, look, that little, that little building you got, that thing can contain you. He's like, man, you were contained in there. He's like, let alone this house I built. And that Shaluma built that, how long? It says the tombs were raised, and coming out of the tombs after the resurrection, they went into the God's city and appeared to many. Then the centurion and those who were with them, keeping watch over Yahushua, saw the earthquake and what took place. They were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the son of Yahuwah, Allah. Right. This is Yahuwah 19, 28. After this, Yahushua, knowing all was finished, said, If we fill the scripture, I thirst, a jar of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of sour wine and hyssop and branch and held it to his mouth. And when Yahushua received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he gave. And he bowed his head and gave it to Ruah. Will you be able to say it's finished when you wear your shoes? Will you, you, will you be able to say it's finished? Bear sheep 2 1. Thus the Shamanites and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, Yahuwah Elohim finished his work that he had done. And he Shabbat the Shabbat seventh day from all his work that he had done. So Yahuwah Barak the Shabbat Yum and made a Kudash because it. On it, Yahuwah rested from all his work that he had done. So what happens after you rest? You weigh the sheep. That's the day. You, raise, you rest today, and then you raise, weigh the sheep. And it's the, the beginning of your 49-day count. Towards Kachibu. And amazingly, You're literally in the same motion as Yahushua Mashiach. Cause what do you think he get ready? What do you think he did when he gave the reward right here? He waved the sheath. Amazing, he did it in haste too. He did it, he waved the sheath. That's what he just did. All right, this is Book of Psalms 37, 37. Mark the blameless and behold the upright. Because he the standard. He said, Yahushua is the standard. He is the niece. Lift up a niece for the people. He said, Behold, you're upright for the future of that man in Shalom. He said, Man, my son and daughter, eat the debosh. If you find it, the honeycomb, you're going to find a future. Because you know what the honeycomb do? It get rid of stuff. You get rid of parasites. You get rid of diseases. That word for blameless is Tom. Tom. You know, Tommy. Tom. Perfect, complete. Perfect. He said, Behold the perfect, the innocent, the, the gentle. The complete. He said, Yahuwah's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone. A apt to teach, correcting his opponents with gentleness. See, so a lot of people say, You got to mark your Hushimashir. Because if you lose sight of him, you lose sight of your sheath. You lose sight of your sheath, you're gonna offer your sheath wrong. And if you are you're gonna honor your sheath wrong, you're gonna you're gonna lose all your gentleness. Of both male and female. You're gonna lose it all. This is your code, James 1, James chapter, I think it's yeah, chapter 4, 1 through 9. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not that which your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have. So you mur murder. All these things I've kept from my youth up. <laughs> Don't be a liar. He said, you covet. All these things I kept from my youth up and cannot obtain. So you fight and quarrel. What are they supposed to do? Forgive? Show compassion? Be gentle? No. He says, you have, not, you have not 
you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you are asking wrong, wrongly and spend it on, spend it on your path. What do you mean asking wrongly? Oh, you the day to clean the outside of the cup. Y'all are those who clean the outside. You adulterous people. Oh, he, he said, Jeremiah who said, man, I seen a, I seen a great thing, man. The Nabi Eam, everybody, everybody came in adultery. They didn't allow the neighbors watch. He said, you asking wrong. Y'all have all the behaviors that makes you a whore. Send his cough, his hand, at your game. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with Yahoo? Therefore, wh whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of Yahuwah. When you do the behaviors of people who don't know him, that's what friendship of the world is. When you do the behaviors of, the, of those who don't know who Yahuwah is and his character and how his son is and his character and how he's supposed to act, he said, when you do their behaviors, you have friendship with them. You gotta be friends with them. Or do you not suppose it is of no purpose that the scripture says you yearns, he yearns jealously over the Ruach that he has made to dwell in us, but gives more con? Therefore it says, you who opposes the proud, these things he hates, but gives con to the humble. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Y'all break the commandments, y'all do all the Annas and Cumin, but then y'all forget the injustice part. You say you shouldn't have did that any other part. It's not that you taste the words of plate does the food, but for some reason y'all keep forgetting. Verse 7 says, Submit yourselves be therefore to Yahuwah. Resist Satan all. But that's all it is. Satan. And he will flee from you. Or flee from in you. Draw near to Yahuwah, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands. Oh. I thought their hands were washed. I wash my hands 10 times a day. Make sure the germs don't get on. Make sure I don't get no COVID-19 and all these other diseases out here that they make up or the ones that are real or these, any of these things, hepatitis, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? I don't, I don't got none of these other diseases, man. I wash myself three times, seven times a day, seven times in the river. He's like, cleanse your hands, which means you sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded. They had this movie called Double Dragon. You know, they say double dragon. You got a double-minded, double dragon mind. Double Satan. Double dragon, double, dual, dual dragons. That's basically what everybody doing up there when they call and fight. You dual dragons. Dual Satanol. Satanol against Satanol. He said, purify your hearts. Because you're going to save the good ones. He's going to have mercy on the good ones. Because then y'all was perfect. He was purified. He was pure and he was innocent. It was a perfect offer. You know why I was perfect? Because he never said anything to the men that did it to him. You know what he said? Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. Even after, even after. He said, be wretched and mourn and weep. And he see why our offerings are not perfect. Why our offerings are not perfect. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourself before Yahuwah and he will exalt you. Right? You, you, I say you, you call people, you try to apologize, and they go and mock you again afterwards. He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. They do it again and again. It doesn't matter. When people are in robberies with you in competition, They'll, they'll never be, they'll never be, I say, have any, any type of happiness or any type of gratitude for anything. They won't. They never would. Right? So this is the book, this is CDC. He said, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Right? CDC website. Washing hands prevents illness and spreads infections to others. That's quarreling, fighting, jealousy, envy, strife, complaining, criticism, pride, adultery, fornication, lying, gossip, slander, true joking, mocking, all these things, forward mouth, arrogance, pride. He said, wash your hands, you sinners. 
Hand washing with soap removes germs from hands. This helps prevent infectious infections because people frequently touch their eyes, nose, mouth without even realizing it. Germs can get into the body through their eyes, nose, and mouth and make us sick. So, if one has all those behaviors, you can wash your hands all you want. But just know, you are there who clean the outside of the cup. But inside, you're full of germs. You're full of sicknesses. It says germs from unwashed hands can get, in, get into food and drinks. Because if you don't clean the inward man, this stuff is going to spread to other people. Because this is spiritual. Germs from unwashed hands can get into food and drinks while people prepare and consume them. So even people who don't wash their hands, they can have germs in their food they prepare. Germs can multiply in some types of foods or drinks under certain conditions and make people sick. You are they who clean the outside of the cup, the plate. The inward man is dirty. If you are, so you're an adulterer or fornicator, you, you got sick hands. He said, cleanse your hands. How are you going to offer your sheep? Germs from unwashed hands can be transferred to other objects like handrails, tabletops, toys, and transfer to another person's hands. Removing germs through hand washing, therefore it helps prevent diarrhea, respiratory infections, infections. It may even help prevent skin and eye infections. So what do you think on your Husha body right now? How do you think he, how do you think he's looking at his body right now? He like, I need to do a detox. Guess what it says? Teaching people about hand washing helps them and their communities stay healthy. Why do you think he, Husha was teaching the people about hand washing? He's like, man, that ain't never defiled nobody. First clean the inside, then the outside gonna be clean. Because you can clean all the outside you want. But if your inside stay healthy, like I can wash my body all I want. Clean my hands. But I got parasites, diseases in my body, all types of wickedness, things I'm doing in my life, adultery, fornication, parasites things inside of me, infectious diseases, my outward washing ain't gonna do nothing. I'm just a clean disease. Does not the ear taste the word as a plate of the food? Because you don't want to eat them herbs. You don't want to eat it naturally or spiritually. You don't want to eat the, the plants. You don't want to eat it raw. Because trying to get rid of their wickedness, right? It says hand washing education is in the community, right? Because you want it in your community. Why do you think Yahushua was doing it? He was trying to get people to get the sicknesses out of their body so they can get healthy again. You're, he was talking to the scribes and the Pharisees and the elders and the people. He's like, y'all sick. And you're making everybody else sick. Don't you understand that? You are patient zero. You are patient zero. You are patient zero. And you are patient zero. That's all he was trying to get them to understand. It ain't the people, it's you. You're making everybody sick. Because he said that's what comes out. Germs from unwashed hands can be transferred to other objects like handrails, tabletops. We talk about that. Right, skip it down. It says pinworms can be spread. Right, pinworms in the following ways. Right, so we talk about cleansing the body. Right, but he said, don't you know what you eat goes out your butt, your exit? Pinworms can then be spread by the following ways. By an infected child not washing hands after using the bathroom. He's like, so y'all clean that out, y'all clean your hands all the time. But inside you, you commit adultery, fornication, that's disease, fornication, adultery, murder, slander, gossip, lying, crude joking, all these things, malice, grudges. So he's like, Y'all got a bunch of pinworms. Y'all are diarrhea, respiratory infection spreaders. You know what it says? If the child then touches playmates or toys, she may pass, she may pass on eggs. Pinworms can also, pinworms can also be transferred to the fingers from clothing or bedding and then spread around the home.
So why do you think he was saying? You know the hearts of men. Man, surely you would. Nothing can contain you. You're even greater than this house. Even that Shalom said. But then you see all these people with all these diseases. And then they say, they clean it outside of the cup, outside of their body. Until you, you know why Yahushua wasn't worried about his hands and stuff being dirty. He's like, man, I'm the cleanest thing you ever see on the inside. He said, why your, why your disciples don't wash your unwashing hands? Because they're doing what I do. So we, we, we clean the inside. The outside, I mean, they're going to perish, but at the same time, you dirty on the inside. Because, you know, poor people, we don't have that type of luxury to get soap and all that. So all the things that you guys get, you guys get to wash your hands with soap and get all these luxuries and stuff, but yet you full of you full of hatred, envy, jealousy, all these wickedness. You mistreat the poor. You, you don't care about the needy. You do all that. Why you got your hands washed? You commit adultery. You sleep with other men's wives. You sleep with a poor man's wife. The poor man with no unwashed hands, you'll go sleep with his wife, and he ain't even do that to nobody in his life. But you rich, and you'll go sleep with a poor man's wife. The man with unwashed hands, wife. You go sleep with somebody's daughter. You go fornicate. You go, you go, you go, you go seduce somebody's somebody's son. But yet you wash your hands and I use all types of antibacterial. What about the antibacterial behavior on the inside of your body? Can a food contaminate unwashing hands? Pathogens can be introduced into the food from infected humans who handle the food without thoroughly washing their hands. So you think. Does not the ear taste the word as the plate does the food? So you think about your behaviors and things that you have within yourself, and then you so you prepare some food for people. And you start sowing your seed, and you start sowing your gospel, your slander, your hatred, your jealousy, your envy, your robberies, your arguing, your, your quarreling, your fighting on YouTube, and all these things. And guess what you do? You're lying. I'm going to expose everybody. Expose you. And he's like, Cleanse your hands, you, you sinners, you double-minded, you double dragons. These passages are thus transferred from one trace amounts to fecal matter present on hands to food, to food hand hygiene. You should ain't tell you not to wash your hands. He telling you to cleanse your inward man that the outward man be clean. So when you wash your hands on the outside, you, can, you be clean within, without. Picture within, without. Just like the art. But guess what people do? They cleanse the outward first. The inward man needs to be clean. Right? This life cycle of a pinworm. Infections begin when pinworms eggs are eaten. People out here sowing pinworms. Pinworms. Usually directly through contaminated hands and directly through contaminated food, bedding, clothing, and other articles. The eggs then travel to the gut where they hatch and mature. And grown pinworms in yellowish white, slender, and about a centimeter long. Around four weeks after ingestion, the adult female moves down to the gut and exits the body via anus to lay a batch of eggs on the surrounding skin, often at night. The worm dies, her reproductive mission complete. The eggs may cause itching, especially at night, so children easily reinfect themselves by scratching their anus and Scraping eggs up eggs under their fingernails, these eggs can then tra be transferred to the mouth and the whole life cycle of the pinworm starts again. The eggs can survive on surface or objects such as furniture, kitchen, surfaces, toothbrushes for even two weeks. And the right conditions can affect other people if transferred to the mouth or food. Right? You'd be like, why are you telling people to cleanse the inside of the cup? Because all their behaviors is just like pinworms. All their behaviors are just like unwashing hands. It, it, it infects other people because they got diseases in their body. Because Yahushua came to save them. He said, they that are sick, they that are not sick, don't need a physician. He's trying to give you a correct diagnosis. This is 2 Timothy 2, 16-17. But avoid irrelevant babble, for it will lead people into more unrighteousness, into more diseases. It spreads diseases. And their talk will spread like gangrene. 
Irrelevant babble is kinephonia, empty sound, fruitful, fruitless conversation, vain. It says having or showing undue or excessive pride. That's what vain is. In one's appearance or achievements, conceitedness, marked by futility, that's worthless, infectious, unsuccessful uses, vain efforts to escape. He said, that, he said, avoid doing this because you're going to spread diseases. Gangrene, an ulcer. He said it's going to spread just like an ulcer. Gangrene, canker, ulcer, a, a break in the skin or mucous membrane with loss of surface tissue, disintegration in necrosis and epithelial tissue, something that festers or corrupts an open sore. He said, you're going to spread just like that. What you say, does not the ear taste the word, is the plate does the food, you spread diseases. You spread diseases in the body. Not only in your own body, but also in other people's body and in the body of Yahushua Mashiach. In the body of righteousness, in the community of righteousness. You say, well, I got to be aware of people that come into my thing in my place. Yeah, yeah. So what is, it says, an erosive and spreading sore. A canker is eroding a spreading sore. An area of necrosis, it says an area of necrosis in a plant. Then he said, you're going to be like a tree planted by rivers of living water. But if you got people, if you're doing this, then you got, he say, you got, you got canker. This is also a plant disease characterized by canker. Didn't know what you just said? He said, every, every tree in me that my father didn't plant, he said, I root that thing up. He said, I root that thing up. That thing is a disease plant. This is a destructive fungal disease of apple. Isn't that one of the trees in the, in the, in the, uh, in the Korean, in the vineyard? A fungal tree of apples and other trees that result in the damage to the bark. You start causing damage to other people. A fruitful apple tree. It's a fruitful apple tree, and now you're causing damage to the apple tree because one doesn't want to take care of themselves, their inward man, their body, and their outward man. They don't want to take care of their flesh or their ruach. Because he said, cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh and ruach. People don't want to do it. So therefore, they infect other people with diseases. And it's not fair. You think about that. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 6, 6 and 7. And you got to, people say, we have these promises. And he said, he said, let's be more cleaner. You can have 15, 1 through 11. I am, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Of course they ain't going to bear fruit with getting them diseases. And every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already. You are clean because of the bar that I have spoken to you. Does not the bar come down like rain and snow? So he's like, I just washed you up. I just cleaned you up. Now he's saying, abide in me and I in you. Which means he's telling you to eat the food. Eat the food. Let it go into your ear and you eat it because you're just tasting it. You're not going to eat it. Drink what I gave you. It's the antidote. As the branch cannot bear fruit of by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. He says, stay in me. Why are you running away from me? He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can't do nothing. You ain't going to be able to do nothing. You ain't going to be able to wave your sheep. You ain't going to have no offering accepted. You ain't going to be able to do no offerings in the morning, evening, and noon. It ain't none of this going to be accepted if you don't abide in me and you don't eat what I give you. I like to see people try to offer their sheep with all that stuff, unwashing hands and all the things they do in their inward man, 
in there out with men and go offer to you. I'd like to see you do it. He <laughs> gonna be like, oh yeah, it remind me of the last 5,000 years. All right, it's Psalm 24, 1 through 6. The earth is Yahuwah's and the fullness thereof, and the world and those who dwell therein. For he hath found, founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of Yahuwah? And who shall stand in the Kudash place? He or she, man, woman, or child, male or female, who has clean hands. People are like, man, you who are going to start? You who are like, you going to give me something? You going to offer me something? He said, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, you sinner. And purify your hearts, you double dragons. Who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear falsely. Who don't worship idols. That's for the false. They became false when they worshiped Astrid. In the monoliths and the Dagon and the groves and the sun, moon, and the stars and, and Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, the, 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 the Great Bear, the Hunter Star, Orion, Oranos, the Her Star, right? the Worshipping, the, the Host of the Shining, the Pleiades, the, the Kima, the Kitsa. Says, Guess what it says, verse 5 He will receive Barak from Yahuwah and righteousness from the Allahim of his salvation. So if you clean your hands, pure your heart, and eat what you should say, eat the body of me and I and you, and you and you clean and all that, and you do all this, guess what happened? He said, you're going to get receive the Barak. Barak. He said, such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek his face of Allahim Yahuwah, the Allahim of your code. We're getting to the end. It says right here, Job, A.U. 17, 7 through 8. My eyes, my eyes have grown dim in the vexation of all my members like a shadow. The upright are appalled at this. And the innocent stirs himself up against the righteous. Why do you think they were doing that? He was on the stake. So yet the righteous holds his way. Why do you think Yahushua was holding his way? And he who has clean hands, huh? the Yod, he who has clean hands, Yod, grows stronger and stronger. So you say, I want to grow. You want to grow? Clean hands, pure hearts, you'll go stronger and stronger. You have the other behavior, you have the things that spread diseases. He said, you're going to get weaker and weaker. You're going to get weaker and weaker, and your strength will be small. That's why Shaul said, some of you have become weak. Some have become sick and ill. And some have died because they ate from the, the ate from it unworthily. He said, examine yourselves to see whether you're in the moon or not. Taste, test the word. Test yourselves. Examine yourselves, right? Proverbs 4, 14 through 18. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evil. Oh, you mean diseases. Avoid it and do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on. Why do you think he's saying all these things avoid? Avoid these people. Avoid these behaviors. For they cannot sleep unless they have done, done wrong. Those are the people with dirty hands. Evil intentions. They got to do something wrong. They can't even go to sleep. They are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble. Those are demons. Shadim. Demons can be inside of your body and make you do wrong, and then they'll let you go to sleep. The same way when it comes to somebody else, they'll make you try to make you do something wrong so they can go to sleep. So they can feel good about themselves. I feel great. I feel like somebody now. Because if I make him stumble, if I make him feel like he's nothing, then guess what? Then I can go to sleep, and I can feel better about myself. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. He's like, you will destroy, divide their tongues. For I sense, I can see violence and sickness in the land. Verse 18, but the path of the righteous is like the dawn, like the sun, like the dawn, like we seen already said, the dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until a full day, which means 
it shines brighter and brighter. I mean, the sun getting higher and higher to this ecliptic plane, and then what happens? Then everything grows. Because they got clean hands. Clean hands. This testament of Zabalun Sudapagrapha, volume 1, 8, 1 through 6. You also, my children, have compassion toward every person with mercy, in order that Yahuwah may be compassionate and merciful to you. In the last days, Yahuwah will send compassion on the earth, and whenever he finds compassion and mercy in that person, he will dwell. To the extent that a man has compassion on his neighbor, to the extent that Yahuwah will have mercy on him. You want your sheep? People say, I want my sheep off. Why do you think Yahuwah just said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do? Because Yahuwah was in them. For when we were, went down to Mizraim, Yusuf did not hold a grudge against us. When, when he saw me, he was moved with compassion. See, anybody can do stuff on the phone. But he said, when he saw me, he, 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 he was moved with compassion. Are you moving compassion when you see people? Or are you avoiding, avoiding people? Are you moving compassion? He said, Yahuwah will dwell in you. He said, whoever you see, do not harbor resentment, my children. Love on one another. And do not harbor, calculate the wrong done by each other, his brother and sister. This shatters unity and scatters all kinship and stirs up the soul. He who recalls evil receives neither compassion nor mercy. Why do you think Yahushua ain't getting no compassion or mercy? Matter of fact, she's so tough. Can't you pray with me for one hour? He's like, man, can't you pray with me for one hour? Man, some people can't even listen to the bar for one hour. He's like, you can't. He's like, people can't even do that. Because did not the ear taste the words of the plate of the food? The palate tastes the food? The mouth of the food? He said, they can't. Why? He said, 2 Corinthians 11, 1 through 3. I wish you would bear with me in my foolishness. Do bear with me. For I feel a divine jealousy since I betrothed you to one husband to present you a pure virgin to Yahushua Mashiach. So that's all a virgin. A virgin can only be married one time. But I am afraid that as the servant disease of Kuwa by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from sincere, pure devotion to Mashiach. Why? Because now, he said, why? Cleanse your hands, you sinners, because you're pure, and you're clean hands, and you have pure mind, so therefore your offering can be accepted. So then he's like, Satan going to deceive your mind. It's all of you can now 5, 20 through 21. And, when, and we know that the Son of Yahuwah has come and has given us an understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his Son, Yahushua Mashiach. He is the true Elohim and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from idols. Right, this is Proverbs 15, 17. Better is the den of herbs where Ahaba is than a fatted ox where there's hatred or a sinner with it. So we look at a sinner, as a person who hates you, he's at love. But the herbs, these are all things that are gonna purge your body. And these are the things that people don't wanna heal. But these are the things that are gonna clean you up and allow your body to be purified. People don't want herbs and fruit, why? Because it's gonna make the things inside of you come out and show. People say, what is the drink? People say, what is the drink of adultery that they had in the Book of Numbers? Everybody be trying to figure that out. I can tell you what the, the drink was. The drink was herbs. The drink was herbs and it was herbs. Why? Because when you eat herbs, certain things appear on your body. When you do things that are unclean, that Yahuwah deems wrong for your body. It will appear on your body. When people have diseases and things in their body, it will appear on your body. When you have things that's in you are unclean, it will appear on your body. That's how you know. It was herbs. Because they don't want them herbs. Because the herbs are going to show who they are. You say, why are you going to clean the outside of the cup? You was like, man, I'm clean. The outside, man, you're inward, man. The dirtiest, dirty. What you worry about your outward man for? Clean the inside first, and then the outward man will show the beauty that I want to manifest in the world. Because he said, you clean your inner, inner man, your, outer, your flesh will be healed. And you will have no diseases on your body. 
You can, you can eat the ox. Ox ain't gonna purge no nothing out your body. Meat with blood in it, that's gonna add diseases to your body. And you're gonna develop a lot of hatred. You're gonna be coiling and fighting. Just like he told him, he said, cleanse your hands, you sinners. You double minded, you double dragons from the beginning. This Nazarene actually the Shalakim, how demons get out power over men. Therefore, demons, as we have said, when once they are able, by means of opportunities, afforded them to convey themselves through base and evil actions. But you think Yahushua was telling them to clean the inside of the cup, and then the outward, you can wash your hands 150,000 times a year, and it still ain't gonna do nothing. In the bodies of men, women, and children, that they remain in them a long time through their own negligence. If all these behaviors stay in you in your for your own for your own negligence, that's you. Because they do not seek after what is profitable for their inner being. They don't want the herbs, they don't want the they don't want the things that are going to cleanse their body. They don't want it. They don't want to hear to the bar. They don't want to hear the things they're doing. They don't want to know. They necessarily compel them for the future to fulfill the desires of the Shadim that dwell in them. All of the parasites and the pinworms and the diseases. All the unwashing hand diseases and all the things that you don't do. Cleanse your hands, you cleanse your hands and your body. But he said, you clean through the word I'm talking right now. He said, but what is worst of all, the end of the age when the demon, Shadim, the disease, will be co-signed to ageless fire, the necessity, the ruach, the body, the human, that also that obeyed him, will be tortured in ageless fire. So when you have a disease, you are literally obeying the spirit. When you have all these those behaviors that you you got to cleanse from the inward man, that the outward man be clean, he said, you just obeying the spirit. It says, with them in torture, torture in ageless fire. They're, together with this body, it has polluted. It's only polluting your body. That's all they're doing. It's just polluting your your body, your inner man, your natural man. And sometimes spirits only come to your body to produce your natural man, so you'll lose control of your inner man. Because sometimes these things come with your flesh until you lose control of your inner man, so you can bring back the behaviors of your inner man. Those are called spiritual attacks. They're only attacking your natural man, so you lose control of the inner man that you cleanse. Understand the tactics. Because your inner man is going to eat an eternal life, the outer man going to perish. So why do you think they attack the outer man? Because they're trying to lick, get control of the inner man again. Right? Understand the battle that we're in. Right? People don't want to understand the dual nature. You're in a battle. You want to get control of the outer and inner. And when they take control of the outer, you can't let them get to the inner. Essene, Book of Yahushua, Sevenfold of Shalom. Barak is the child of light who, who is wise in mind who created the Shamayim. The mind of the wise is a well plowed field, which give it forth abundance and plenty. For if thou showest a handful of seeds to a wise man or woman or child, he will see in his mind eye a field of golden wheat. All he's going to see is gold. If thou show a handful of seeds to a fool, he will see only that which is before him and call them worthless pebbles. All the work I got to do. I gotta prepare the beds. I gotta prepare the soil. I gotta pull up the stones. I gotta pull up the roots. I gotta put the thing out. I gotta plow. I gotta put holes. I gotta make circles. Then I gotta sow the seed. Then I gotta wait. Then I gotta wait another three months. Then I gotta wait for it to depend on Yahuwah. Then I gotta do all that. That's all a fool looks at, thinks about. It. Just start complaining. They just complain. He will see only that which is before him and call them worthless pebbles. As they feel, as and as a field of the wise, man giveth forth grain in abundance. In a field of fool, a harvest of stones, so it is with our thoughts. And that's what people do with their own mind. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. People do that with their own thoughts. That's, they do that. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. I'm the type of person, I say, that's you. Like they say? <laughs> I say, the only reason you ain't, people say, the only reason you like that is that you. It says, the sheep of the golden wheat lies hidden within the county kernel, so is the Malkuth of Shamayim hidden within our thoughts. That's where your sheep at. That's where the kingdom at. It's within. That's why Yahushua said, clean the, cleanse the inside of the outward man be clean. If they be filled with power and love and wisdom, chukmah, of the Malakim of Shamayim, Father, so shall they carry us to the Shama, heavenly sea. But if they be stained with corruption and hatred and ignorance and all types of diseases, and all things that Yahushua, Yahushua told you not to do, and guess what? They shall chain our feet with pain and suffering, which means you're going to be chained down with a lot of stomach pains, a lot of heart headaches, heartburn. You're going, to have, you're going to have a lot of things happening with your body. Why? 
you're going to have a lot of behaviors that are disease spreading. Because parasites want to mate with parasites. Diseases want to mate with diseases. And when they see somebody else, the only reason they want to infect them is so they can spread. And they're attracted to each other. No man can serve two masters. Neither can an evil thought abide in the mind filled with the light of the Torah. So your thoughts corrupted. You got evil thoughts, you're going to be attracted to somebody with evil thoughts. You're going to be attracted to somebody with evil behavior. You're going to be attracted to people who got diseases. You're going to be attracted to people who do that. You're going to be attracted to adulterers and fornicators and liars and gossips and slanders and, and, and all types of other diseases, and gangrene and gossip and babbling. You're going to be attracted to robberies. You're going to be attracted to it. You're going to be attracted to malice and people who forsake farming. He said, it, you're, going to be, he said you're going to be the fools. You're going to be the lazy person. You're going to be attracted to la other lazy people. He said, he who have found shalom, peace with the mind, have learned to soar beyond the realm of the Malachim. He said, you learn to soar beyond the realm of the Malachim. To soar beyond the realm of Malachim. Know the shalom with thy heart. He said, you got to know it first. Know this type of peace. Fulfill it. Then after you know it, abide in me and I in you, and then fulfill it. Do it. And he said, how should the scripture be fulfilled? That's what Yahushua said. If he'd have said, blank y'all, send a monarchy and kill him, instead of saying, forgive him, Father, we know not what they do, and not hold a grudge and do all the things, and keep his hands up that people may be rescued and saved, guess what? Had he not fulfilled it, that peace, that shalom, we wouldn't have been able to have no shalom. His chastisement, his beatdown, brought us peace. And if you don't, if you don't appreciate that, if you don't praise him for that, if you don't give him honor and praise, not only to yourself and yourself, to the whole world, he said, if you don't confess me before men, I ain't gonna confess, or women, I ain't gonna confess you before my father and Shamayim. He said, fulfill this shalom with thy body. Because that's what he did. He said, it is finished. He said, it is finished. Right? This is, all of you can now 1, 2, 2, 24 to 27. That's what you heard from the beginning about in you. The rush, like that, that would say. Ab, I say, the bar a month rush. This is the Rashid. It's actually the, the beginning of the count. When the sun goes down, you go back to the first day of creation. The first day. Wave your sheep. It go back to the first day. Amazingly, after the seventh day, go back to the first day and you wave your sheep. And he said, Ruach, Marakav, Al Panim, Hamani. People say they want the Ruach. He said, He gives the Ruach to them who obey Him. That's who He gives the Ruach to. To them to that obey Him. That's what you heard from the beginning abide in you. What you heard from the beginning abides in you, abide in me, and I in you. And you're going to bring forth much fruit. Because he, Yahuwah is a fruitful vine. Yahushua is a fruitful vine. You're going to bring forth a lot of fruit if you abide in Yahushua. A lot of, he's saying, a lot of songs, a lot of things, sayings, a lot of what wisdom, a lot of knowledge. He said, you're going to bring it forth. Why? Because you're abiding in him. If you're not in him, you're attached to him, you keep rejecting the word. Guess what happens? You ain't going to be able to be in him. He said, then you too will abide in the son, the, the Ab, and the father. What do you think that stone that the Abin that Mashar was standing on, that held his hands up, his sheep. The, his Omer. His Omer. His Amer. And people saying, why you gotta do it every day? Yahushua said, if you don't take up your cross daily and follow me, he said, you got to take it up every day, which means you got to have an omer every day. He said, the son and in the father. He said, and this is the promise he made to us, eternal life. I write these things about those who are trying to deceive you. First cleanse the inside of your cup. Then the outward may be clean also. Make sure you wash your hands after you clean your inward man. Don't be walking around with no unwashing hands and your inner man is just wicked because then you double dragon. He said, you double Satan. 
I'm writing these things about those who are trying to deceive you, but the anointing you receive of me, of him, of him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. It's just like to do. It's just like this 364 day cycle, which equals the 13. The 49 year count equals the 13. Five cubits, five cubits long, five, five cubits, five width, five cubits width, five cubits width, three cubits long. 13. 49 day count, 13. Akai, 13. All this stuff equals to the same number. One, a cob, first day, sun go down, wave the sheep, one. The two shall become one, a cob. Five stones come one in my hand. Just one. But the anointing you receive of him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything, and it's true, and it's no lie. It's not, how you say, shakir, it's not falsehood. Just as it has taught you, abide in him. So why would Yahuwah teach you a lot? People saying, you know, he said, doesn't the ear taste the word of the plate? Does the mouth taste the food? He said, abide in him. And I in you, abide in me, and I in you. And therefore, we're going to bear fruit together. Me, you, together, in the vine. And we're going to bear fruit together. Because it's always been about togetherness. People don't, people don't understand. That's, that's the whole point. So we look at Yahushua Mashiach, we look at his life. We look at the truth. We look at being like a palm tree. We look at being like a palm tree and bearing living water. Even being planted by living water. Even the rivers and streams that flow crystal water. Crystal clear. Or you may drink of the fountain of life that springs to everlasting life. Yahushua Mashiach. So as we move forward toward the evening, and even every evening, we take on the practice of offering up an omer for 49 days. But also opening up an omer for the rest of your life. Offering up a praise for the rest of your life, a confession for the rest of your life, a prayer for the rest of your life, being unleavened for the rest of your life. But that is a perfect offering, a tamim offering, a mature, beautiful, intelligent offering. That's what tamim is. But it's, we look at ourselves, we look at our body, we look at our mind. He said, No evil thought can dwell in the mind for the light of the Torah. Know the shalom with that heart and fulfill it with that body. For the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth.